beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed One of the areas of confusion in our lives and in the body of Christ is the inability to accurately discern the will of God for our lives. Hence, confusion, even among the most matured of believers. There are so many of us who are unable to make progress in different areas of our lives because of our inability to accurately discern the will of God. I have taken out time in recent times to study this subject because I believe that it's useful in my own life and in the body of Christ. And I think that which I will share will bless you. It's a very broad subject, but wherever we stop, because I want us to pray. Hallelujah. I want us to really pray. So there's been confusion. Lord, should I stay in Zaria or should I be in Abuja? Lord, should I do this? Should I do that? The inability to create a system around our lives that helps us to discern what we believe God is communicating. There are people right now who have gotten married. They love God, but in their minds, they believe that their marriages were not according to the will of God. Are we together? Please pay attention. This is very important. There are people today who have been in regions where they believe it's not the will of God. There are people who are in all kinds of confusion and these things can create a lot of tenseness, a lot of worry. Um, is there a system in God by which a man can accurately discern the will of God. Are we together? Because the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 6, when you read from verse 10, Jesus teaching the disciples how to pray. He told them that the kingdom of God only comes when and if his will is being done. Are we together? So he ties the manifestation of the kingdom of God to his will, not your will. In fact, we see how much Jesus Christ so desired the will of the Father to be done. This is what he said in Gethsemane. He said, Father, if it be possible, this is my will now, take this cup off me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. There are so many lives that are in a state of perpetual dissatisfaction. Some is almost like a stigma and a guilt they carry for the rest of their life. Because 
they feel that at one point or the other they did not accurately discern the will of God businesses jobs marriages ministries there are many pastors who believe that they wrongly went to certain ministries they just felt that no I did not hear God well and the sad part of it listen is that there are people who took actions based on what at the time they were taking the actions they perceived and believed it to be the will of God is God helping us tonight so at the time they applied for the job at the time they went abroad for instance at the time they did what they did they believed and perceived at that time that it was the will of God so part of the things that I'm going to be discussing today is what exactly is the will of God what are the dimensions to the will of God can the will of God change are we together this is very important it will make us mature and it will make us be able to walk circumspectly hallelujah because your advancement in life and my advancement in life will be tied to my understanding the will of God part time and the ability to take steps in that direction did you know I discovered especially recently that believers are not so rebellious if they know what the will of God is they have the stamina to follow along the challenge usually and largely is that the will of God is not known and so men are left in limbo as to what directions to take in their career in their lives and there have been all kinds of teaching and theories about the will of God so pay attention hallelujah the word logos write it down please L O G O S is the word that is translated in John chapter 1 verse 1 as word W O R D is the word logos so when the Bible says in the beginning was the word the word there is the word logos and the word logos means the thoughts of a man please write it down the thoughts the thinking of a man the word logos means the ideas of a man the thoughts of a man the ideas of a man number three the word logos also means the desire or the intention of a man so when we talk about the word logos we mean number one the thoughts of a man number two the ideas of a man number three the desires or the intention of a man then number four the communications of a man the speakings of a man which is consistent with what he's thinking the speakings of a man for most people is only number four that we know so every time we say the word of God, what comes to our mind is just the communications, the speakings of God. That is correct. But the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It says, for I know the thoughts, Jeremiah 29, 11. Please give it to us. Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think. So we see that it does not start with God speaking. It starts with God thinking. Are we together? Jeremiah 29 11 for I know the thoughts that I think towards you saith the Lord right thoughts of good or of peace and not of evil right to bring you a what a future and an expected end not just an end an expected end I know the thoughts that I think towards you saith the Lord they are thoughts of good or thoughts of peace so God is thinking now listen the will of God represents his idea, his desire. Are we together? His thoughts.
for a man, for a people, that's the will of God. So when we talk about the will of God, there's no mysticism around it. It's a communication of God's desire, his intent, his idea on that subject matter or on your life. The will of God represents his thoughts, his idea, his desire for your life or for whatever subject it is that you're considering. Now, I want you to know something about the will of God. Listen, the will of God is applicable only as far as his purposes are concerned. This is very important. The will of God is applicable only as far as his purposes are concerned, meaning that anything that does not directly um, culminate to the birthing of the purposes of God, his will, of, his will is not committed there. You are not going to hear God's opinion over a matter that is not directly tied to the advancement of his kingdom. Are we together? Let me give you an instance. I can't remember what I ate today, but I can assure you that it was not God that told me to eat it. Are we together? If I decide to take this water now, it was not the Holy Spirit that spoke to me. Are we together? Because com whether I take swan water or um, ragolis or whatever it is, that activity does not in any way interrupt the advancement of God's kingdom. Are we together? So the will of God in terms of his sovereign desire is not committed to act there. He gave man a will also. Follow me. Now, the will of man is also useful as far as our work in this kingdom is concerned. So there are two wills here. There is the will of God or what I call the sovereign will of God because there are different theological explanations about the will of God. There is what according to theologians when you read Romans chapter 12 when you read um, um, from verse 1 and 2 verse 1 specifically right it talks about uh, verse 2 sorry it talks about the good the perfect the acceptable will of God that's not my subject of discussion today those are just theological understandings and there is a place for them but my my assignment is to help us understand how to discern the will of God To ask God whether you should bob your hair or not is silly because according to his wisdom, that matter is within the jurisdiction of your human will to solve. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Whether I bob or I don't bob, as far as my assignment and the advancement of the kingdom as committed to me is concerned, it is inconsequential. So really God does not care. But for Samson, it was a serious issue because his babbing or no babbing contained the secret to his strength which made him a judge over Israel. And so because of that, God had to put his mouth even in the issue of his hair. So God is only committed and he will manifest his will along the dimensions where the advancement of his kingdom is concerned. Do you understand? This is very important. The third thing I want you to know is your human will is useful and it can make decisions also that are consistent with the will of God. There is the human will. In fact, to be honest with you, the one factor that makes us different from every other creation is that God gave us a mind. And in that mind, there is what we call um, psychologically and theologically also will, emotion, intellect right the three components that make up our soul our will our emotions and then our intellect is God helping us now so in birthing the purposes of God there is a mutual interplay of the will of man and the will of God there are certain decisions please pay attention there are certain decisions where God will never allow the will of man to contribute in the decision because of the gravity 
of that activity with respect to his kingdom are we together there are certain activities that god will leave to the jurisdiction of man's will because regardless of what option the man takes it will not directly affect him listen if god took away the will of man then he will be wicked because man would not be serving him willingly so he made two trees in the garden of eden are we together one he called the tree of what life is that true and the other was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil why would god put two trees in the garden i mean he would have just annihilated everything that could cause man to fall but he put those two trees and then he told man he said man this is my option for you i want you to live eternally right and so on and so forth however of this tree do not eat it of this tree you can eat it freely eat of any tree and then man chose to violate the purposes of god that leads me to the next point the will of man can superimpose over the will of god god is helping us tonight the will of man can superimpose over the will of god that's not to mean the will of god is weak that's how much liberty that's how much dominion that's how much of the god class this man has been made to function an example of this according to god's divine order and predeterminate counsel the nation of israel were never supposed to have an earthly king are we together it was god's design that his sovereignty be felt even by man and so he always wanted to be their king a nation of people who had god only as their king so that they would not be tempted to get into human worship or idolatry or any of such kinds of things but the bible says the nation of israel themselves they came together and they said give us a king are we together the crowning of Saul as king was never God's intention. Read your Bible. The people pressured the prophet Samuel. And he went to God and God said, well, if they want a king, so be it. And Saul became the king. And from there, different kings started coming. Is God speaking to us? Are we getting blessed? what then brothers and sisters is the key to accurately discerning the will of god at what point in my decision making process am i left to my will alone at what point in my decision making process should my will completely step aside at what point in my decision making process because there are things listen there are things that our human wills can execute and so leaving it up to god is a waste of time we may never get results in some of those areas i'll give you an instance of one of those fallacies financial prosperity for instance here's what people say if it is the will of god to bless me he will bless me you get the point now so if i am not blessed my assumption is that what it is not the will of god to bless me so i am comfortable in poverty i am comfortable in failure i'm comfortable in mediocrity and when they ask me i say i have a a a premonition in my mind that if god wants to bless me he's so mighty he can bless me are we together now all through scripture listen there are times when we see through the character of the dealings of scripture and that's one of the importance of scripture right the bible says scripture is profitable so when we study scripture among the many things we get is we understand the character of god's dealings with man we know how god deals with man many times in scripture we see that prophets for instance prophesied as commanded is that true they prophesied as commanded you know that although um, they played a role in speaking, 
they did not contribute to altering what was communicated there were times when prophets spoke they spoke in their capacity as prophets it was never because God said it they stood upon the strength of their human wills and prophesied is that true hmm. the transference of leprosy from uh, what's the name of that man from Naaman to Gehazi it was at the personal discretion of the prophet simply because the guy went and chased Naaman and said Elisha has changed his mind he said you should give some of the money are we together so we now see that in that act at his discretion I'll give you another example when the children were laughing at Elisha the Bible says by himself he called a bear out and it ate them so we see all through scripture that the wheels of men found expression over certain matters now there are two dimensions of the will of God because that's our emphasis there are two dimensions of the will of God I want us to discern and I want us to understand and discuss tonight very briefly and then we'll pray number one is what I call the written will of God the written will of God that means the will of God as expressed in scripture I told us from the beginning of this discussion that the word logos is translated the thoughts of a man his intention his desire his speakings now look up please the Bible is a compendium of God's dealings with man are we together it is the way he has been dealing with man for many years and this Bible theologically speaking we are told it contains 66 books you know but of course there are lots of theological perspectives like the Apocrypha and other extra biblical texts the books of Jasha and the Black Sea Scrolls and all of that there are other books that um, the book of Enoch and several dealings other books that were written by other apostles like Thomas and the rest that did not make it in the 66 books but theologically we accept that by the wisdom of God that this is a compendium of what we call the holy scriptures as given are we together now from genesis to revelation as we know is a recorded um, a documentation of the dealings of god with man you see the dealings of man with indiv the dealings of god with individuals cities kings backsliders animals people in their the apex of their spiritual life people at the lowest level the the goal is that by studying this among the many other things i receive i can be able to see the synergy of god's character are we together so by my my intimacy with the word i come to a point where experientially i can discern what would have been the dealings of god in this matter based on what he has written is called the written will of God everybody say the written will of God say it again the written will of God it says forever O Lord thy word is settled and then it says your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path is that true very very important it says heaven and earth will pass away but not one jot will come out of his word and so we believe that the scriptures are holy they were not written by perfect men but then the bible says holy men wrote it as they were moved of the spirit so regardless of their temperament regardless of the the manipulations in translation i don't want to begin to give you all the the church history behind the formation of these 66 books because it's a lot of stories are we together certain editings in this bible as we know were not done by those who wrote it it was done by a class of theologians and different people who translated the bible and made it consumable for us like the king james version being one of the earliest version the story of king james is a very old story the man who authorized that this be translated 
purely in English and be communicated to people. It's a long story. Are we together now? But then as we know it, because there are many people who would argue that these scriptures are not complete and truly speaking, when you study the theological dimension of the word, you will find out that there are certain translations or communications that were an error of the translators. Are we together? It did not hold the original thoughts of those who were speaking. For instance, when you read the encounter of John the Baptist, I mean uh, John the Revelator, where he says the Lord speaking to him, I am Alpha and Omega. The word and Omega, there is an error in translation. There is no and. It is I am Alpha, Omega. But the communication of um, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew and the, Greek tes the, the New Testament was largely written in Greek and Aramaic. So that was the communication. And sometimes in these translations, the men who did the translation themselves um, judged certain things based on their spiritual limitations. However, the Holy Ghost has been able to breathe upon this such that even with the imperfections, it is enough to be able to guide you to understand God. Are we together? So the imperfections in the Bible notwithstanding, they are not so grave as to confuse a Christian. Is that true? Now look up please. Before this book, this Bible as we know, was released to believers. Because our generation, we were born and we grew knowing the Bible to be available. Is that true? But that's not the way it was in the old times. In ancient times, they were not given, you did not go home with a Bible. The Bible, as we know, were called scrolls. Are we together? And these scrolls contain the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses, called in the Hebrew, the Torah. Are we together? These five books were kept together with the prophets and other writings of these people. They were kept and uh, other documents that we call the annals of the kings, the dealings of kings, they were kept in the temple. The priests were the custodians of these scrolls because they were precious. So what would happen is that it's still practiced in the Anglican sometimes. You see that they have um, different um, pulpits and with one there is a big Bible that is permanently left there. If you are taking the first reading or the second reading, you don't come with your own Bible. You just come and it's open. You look for the scripture, you read and go back. That was the way it was in Luke chapter 4 for Jesus. Because the Bible says that one time he came to the temple and it was given to him. He didn't come with it. Are we together? It was given to him the prophecy of Esaias, the messianic prophecy, Isaiah 61 was a messianic prophecy. It was speaking about Jesus, but then prophetically to the church. Is God helping us now? And so when um, Jesus began to read that one, the Bible says he folded the scroll when he finished and kept it back and said, this day, right, is this fulfilled in your ears? So the first operation or the first dimension to discerning the will of God is the understanding of the character of God as communicated through scripture. That's what I mean by the written will of God. The written will of God entails understanding his character, not necessarily his unique instructions, his character to know how God would have operated over certain matters. Now, listen, whether you read the Old Testament, you read the New Testament, you read the law, the prophets, the gospels, the epistles, or the book of Revelation, it doesn't matter what dimension. Every book of the Bible contains um, either directly or prophetic representations of God's dealings with man. Now, when I study the Bible, listen, what is happening to me is that I'm bringing my spirit to oneness with the way God does his things. Are we together? That's what we call righteousness. 
There is the gift of righteousness, but there is the operation of righteousness where you understand God's ways of doing things. Are we together? Then the second dimension of this written word are direct instructions that are written in the Bible. Direct instructions. There are certain opinions of God he did not leave in the dark. It was clearly stated. One example. There is nobody who gets up right now a man wanting to marry a man. Are we together? And then he's trying to pray or find out, is it really the will of God for me to marry James or to marry Junior or to marry whoever? The will of God on that matter was not left in the dark. Therefore, shall a man, a what? Leave his father and mother, comma, and cleave to his are we together and they too shall become one flesh so two men scripturally cannot become one flesh two women cannot become one flesh are we together so you do not attempt to use any other strategy to seek the will of God on that matter. The will of God is written, is clear. It's up to you to align with that will or rebel against it. Let me tell you something about the will of God as written in scripture. God does not necessarily punish people. His laws were designed with consequences attached to them. So violating those principles expose you by default to certain things he says he that breaks the hedge he didn't say I will bring a serpent he that breaks the hedge the serpent will what? strike bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse that there may be meat that is my will I want to increase you but this is what I have put and if you refuse, you can choose to refuse. But the moment you choose rebellion, you also choose the consequence that comes with it. The devourer. So God will never cast the devourer out of earth. The devourer is roaming around. Your own assignment is to exempt him from your vicinity. But he is there. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The written will of God. Now let me tell you the truth. There are many aspects of our lives where by faithfully studying the Bible or being open to quality teachings of the word of God, we are brought into an experiential comprehension of the will of God. All that we teach that we call the laws of the kingdom are a communication of God's will to prosper us. Now you may be asking, is it God's will for me to prosper? You go to the Bible, right? I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Say at who? Not a prophet. The Lord. Thoughts of good and thoughts of peace to bring you. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. Then shall thou make your way prosperous. And thou shalt have good success. So is my prosperity left in the hands of God? No. It left the hands of God since. He said, thou shall make your way prosperous and thou shall have good success. Can I go to heaven poor? Yes. Will I live in heaven on earth? No. Are we together now? The will of God. Now, let me tell you something. Every time you desire to know the will of God, the first place to find the will of God. I know why I'm taking our time to teach this. Because when I talk about the second dimension, then we're going to talk about a lot of other things if there's time. If there's no time, we we'll continue next week. The word of God or scripture is the primary instrument for discerning the will of God. Please write it down. Scripture is the primary instrument given to men by God to discern the will of God. Your chances of walking in error are greatly minimized when you consult the Bible first as the basis for your comprehension of the will of God concerning a matter. 
I say this because our generation is gradually drifting away from our perception of the will of God as written in scripture to other extra biblical methods and while they are useful they are only secondary and inferior as a matter of fact to the written word of God say the written will of God look up please do you know why many Christians are largely confused almost about everything let me admit to you that many Christians including preachers don't study their Bibles they don't study their Bibles if they want to teach on faith they just go online and Google faith any material that comes out they just pick the scriptures for the teaching but they don't settle down to study the Bible not studying the Bible will keep you in the dark as regards God's will that has already been written there are so many people years ago when we were a lot fewer before koinonia started um all of us used to participate in holy ghost baptism you know we used to pray for people every night that was how we socialized by getting people filled with the holy spirit and um i remember most times people would come and they would complain and say i wasn't filled i was prayed for in church and i was not filled with the holy spirit the pastor was even angry with me and he said maybe i'm possessed or whatever it is or i should go and come back but that recognition i remember one of the key things god gave me as a revelation was the fact that he desired for everybody to be filled with the holy spirit with evidence of praying in tongues i searched this thing scripture after scripture until i came to a point where i was absolutely convinced that everyone should be filled with the holy spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues regardless of denominations and that culminated into a dimension of confidence in me because every time I prayed for people, regardless of their hardness, I knew and I expected them to be filled. You see, when the will of God is not known, your confidence shakes. When the will of God is not known over any matter, your confidence shakes. The word of God was given to us as an instrument of discernment. To help us understand his perspectives. Quickly, let's look at the second dimension. The second dimension to the discernment of the will of God is his revealed will. Or the second dimension, if you want to look at the will of God, his revealed will. Revealed will. Revealed will. Revealed will. And the, the nature and the operation of this will, please look up, is on matters where you directly would not get a direct word for from scripture. Are you getting what I'm saying? Issues that concern maybe business, issues that concern marriage, issues that concern certain things that are personal and unique to you. Now, there are times that you will need to make decisions. Please listen. And these decisions, you may not find a direct scripture so that you can get clarity as to what God will want you to do. There's no place written in scripture that says that you should remain in Zaria and be planted in Zaria. Are we together now? You can find scripture about Isaac remaining in, in a land sowing and you can find scripture about people remaining in a land and dying so you see that's confusing on different occasions people did the same thing let me tell you something about the bible that's why we need this second dimension there are a lot of things that seemingly look conflicting about the will of god that's why we need his revealed will is that true The revealed will of God communicates his unique desire over the personal issue of concern in your life. The revealed will of God communicates his personal desire. You must understand this. It is unique to you. Look up. Let me just go ahead of myself very fast. 
the unique will of God for me may not be the unique will of God for you. It is dangerous to transfer the communications of God as given to you to someone else because his revealed will comes tailor-made to address the unique situation in your life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? For instance, in the meeting when we were about to start, you saw us doing a lot of foolish things. It was the reception, my discernment on the will of God. He wanted to touch people and bring breakthroughs. And the method through which it will be carried out was also revealed. Are we together? The moment I received it, all that it was left was that I obeyed. And then God brought the performance. Now, if you get up and copy what I did, and go to a meeting tomorrow and tell everybody shout they may shout and jump up and down and they pass a paper to you and say you have five more minutes you have wasted time and wasted the people's time and then you are angry the revealed will of god is for our personal advancement you do not create doctrines out of the revealed will of god to you because the revealed will of god to you is as a result of so many things there are many factors just follow me we're going somewhere so we have established the fact that there are two dimensions to the will of god there is the written will of god as communicated in scripture the written will of god does not have exceptions Everybody who must walk with God in that area must subscribe to what he has said. God will not create an exemption to the rule just for you as far as it is communicated in the Bible. But the revealed will of God describes his unique communication to you based on your personal need. Are we together? Am I, are, we, are we following together, please? Hallelujah. An example of situations that will require the revealed will of God number one I'm giving you a few examples you don't have to write them but number one imagine that Shadrach is trusting God now for where to settle down as a man I hope you know that if you do not love God and you don't know God usually you work with your instincts and guess your way around if it's not God's will, you pay for it. If your instinct suddenly leads you to God's will, you enjoy breakthrough. Most people use instincts. And instincts are a provision from God. But when with the knowledge he knows now, he wants to discern the will of God. You can take your Bible and open it and not directly find where it is written. Or Shadrach wants to ask, oh God, when do you want me to settle down maritally? There's nowhere in the Bible written where you find and Shadrach married 2016. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So at that point, you will need to tap into another source of supply to communicate to you what God wants. Let me tell you something. Brothers and sisters, I submit to you, it pays to walk in the will of God. Don't ever let anybody preach you into believing that you can compromise the will of God and make progress in life. No matter what price it takes to be confident that you are walking in the will of God, pay it. It pays. Knowing the will of God gives us confidence. That's why we cast out devils. Because his will is communicated to us. That's why we walk in the anointing. We saw it, we read it, we understood it, we believed it. But the confusion in the body of Christ now is on the revealed will of God. And it's a very technical dimension of walking with God. And so I came up with a few ways. I'm going to give us very quickly... Three ways, three ways to discern the revealed will of God. Three major ways. There may be many, you may find them in many textbooks, but three major ways. To discern the will of God. Ready? Number one, peace and joy write it down believe me brothers and sisters don't trivialize what you are hearing peace and joy the bible says look up it says the kingdom of god when it is manifested it is not a meat and drink 
right but it is in righteousness peace and joy in the holy ghost many believers have walked out of the will of god the revealed will of god because they neglected the peace of god the bible says the peace of god that surpasses all understanding let it garrison your heart that means the moment i'm about to take a decision or i'm trusting god for a revelation over a decision and your peace supernaturally ceases and there is no joy let me tell you joy is not happiness hear me there are times you will be weeping and yet have joy joy don't confuse joy with happiness happiness is circumstantial if i give you one thousand naira, i expect you to be happy not necessarily joyful There's a song that we used to sing, I still have joy. I still have joy. After all I've been through, I still have joy. I still have peace. I still have peace. After all I've been through, I still have peace. So joy and peace let me tell you there is no man who is not born again who can have peace he says peace i give you peace is only truly experienced not is it's not just the word shalom shalom just means a state of rest right nothing missing nothing broken no that's not the word that is used there he said the best way to describe that kind of peace was a description of the psalmist he makes me lie down in still waters peace and joy there are many of us look up please as pastors as leaders as individuals as business people we have been praying and trusting god over certain decisions or we are on our way executing certain decisions and your peace is lifted let me tell you the absence of peace is the absence of the presence of the kingdom which is the absence of the will of god being done because connecting these two scriptures the will of god done his kingdom comes and his kingdom is made of peace and joy so wherever the will of god is finds expression there is peace and there is joy say amen the peace of god that surpasses all understanding he says is to garrison our hearts praise the lord so a lady is about to get married please listen what i'm saying is very serious i want us to pay attention god put this in my heart and i believe it's a blessing for all of us are we together you may be born again you may be tongue talking now watch this um my dear come let me use any of you come now watch this this lady watch this please I come and ask this lady out as an anointed man and she loves God she knows I'm a responsible person are you hearing what I'm saying I'm using a case study now to show you how to communicate and to discern the revealed will of God and then all of a sudden she wants to tell me yes now listen but in her place of prayer something is happening to her peace and her joy let me tell you when your peace and joy lives especially when there is no physical reason for it it's a language in the realm of the spirit don't you ever ignore it when you lack explanation as to why you do not have peace over a matter it's a sign to go to god no matter what you are doing stop where you are and find out i don't know why i started with the issue of marriage but let's continue god is speaking listen listen carefully do you know that this lady may have her peace and joy being threatened every time she she thinks of saying yes to me now it's up to her to numb the peace and bind it and cast it and get married to me and then after many years what her peace was saying later plays out have you seen people who say i knew it every time they get into trouble they say honestly and i knew this thing god was telling me i didn't listen let me tell you something 
the language of peace and joy are standard spiritual languages. Standard spiritual languages of communication. God is helping somebody this night. Now listen, do you know that God may be speaking to this lady and say, there are three things. Her being afraid of answering me based on what she's feeling can mean three things. Number one, it can mean that as good as I am, as good as she is, we are not the will of God for ourselves. It's as simple as that. You don't have to be bad. Number two, listen, it can be that I am of God for her. However, there are issues in my life that can implicate our marriage in the days to come. So the peace refuses to leave you until that issue is dealt with. Assuming there is a covenant and I come from a family where all the women that marry men die. That's what is about to happen to that lady. And so God is that lack of peace. God is saying this may be your will, but there are issues to resolve. Now it's not the issue of marriage. There is a spiritual issue or for instance, God forbid, but God may be speaking and say, Joshua Selman, if you marry this lady now, she may have a problem with barrenness. There is a spirit that is roaming around this life that may cause barrenness. And he's saying, I am seizing your peace so that you will deal with that issue. Have you not seen people when they are delivered, they can get up and fall in love afresh. It's like after that deliverance, they get up and they are ready to move because the barrier has given way. We ignore these things and we pay for it. Are we together? A businessman is about to get into trouble and is calling you to come and partner with him and you love him sincerely but every time you want to move something in your spirit just tells you hold on and you just say no way anything that will stop my breakthrough you see let me tell you don't just be too scientific with God there are times you must maintain your spirituality at all times one little communication of peace can help you there are many ladies as you are looking at me right now you have gotten into needless troubles if only you listen to the prompting of peace and joy. Peace was speaking, your eyes were seeing money and you followed your way to the grave. Are we together? Peace. Peace. I remember one time, a lady who was getting married, they had even gone very far, very far as in it was almost that time. And the lady called me and was crying her life and said for over three days she had not slept. She said it's as if she's entering hellfire. Literally, you get up. Sometimes she said she can shake physically. I said something is wrong. Run to your pastor. Go and talk to him. She said, ah, but too many people have been committed. I said, who are the people? Who are the people? They would dance on that day and leave you. Let me tell you something. Be strict about walking in the will of God. I'm only using marriage as a case study, but it applies to every area of your life. Please, I love you and I want to be your roommate. And the moment you, you move, something in you just says no. And you are wondering, ah, but this brother or this sister is, I mean, the sweetest person as can ever be. They don't have to be bad for your peace to leave you. We are talking of the will of God here. The will of God is as designed by God many of us think that when our peace and our joy leaves over an issue it simply means it's wrong you want to travel and your peace and joy leaves it doesn't mean you are going to have accident you will arrive safely it's just not consistent with the will of god for your life danger does not have to happen to prove that a thing is not the will of god for your life it can happen as planned which is even more dangerous Is God speaking to someone here? Peace and joy. Number two. Dreams, visions, and prophetic experiences. Dreams, visions, and prophetic experiences. I wish I didn't have to talk about this because I can spend, thank you my dear, I can spend a whole night vigil talking about this a whole night vigil talking about this dreams visions do you know satan has so metamorphosed in his technology of manipulating dreams and visions right now to an extent that many people are even afraid of their dreams and visions the devil is a liar in the name of jesus christ 
let me tell you something anything that is written in the bible is still being used by god is still a valid tool i know that there are all kinds of perversions there are many of us if you hear dream and vision resentment comes in your heart because almost 95 percent of everything you have seen as dreams and visions either did not happen in your life or backfired on you so because of that you hate dreams and visions that's not true the bible says joel chapter 2 it says, I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Are we together? And then it says, your young men shall what? See visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. So visions and dreams and supernatural experiences, though being perverted, is still a tool that God uses to communicate his revealed will to people. If I begin to tell you how and why dreams are perverted, we have to go into the subject of demonology, the operation of demons. And I'm not sure our time is, is, is up practically, so we'll just leave it for another time. But let me tell you something. Dreams can be manipulated. Visions can be manipulated. Prophetic experiences can be manipulated. However, however, listen to me. There is a way you walk with God to an extent that your dreams and visions become express revelations. I know people today who are walking effortlessly in the will of God thanks to dreams, visions, and solid, notice my use of word, solid prophetic experiences. Not opinions. Solid prophetic experiences. Not, oh God, if it's your will, let boss carry us after koinonia. That's not a wise that's not a wise riddle that you play with God. A lot of us do a lot of stupid things. Lord, if it is your will, as I'm coming out, Charles must tell me good evening. That means I should, I should go home after exams. You know, all those kind of things are not wise. We, we fool ourselves when we do that. Look at me. When Herod was planning to kill baby Jesus... Did you know that it was a dream? Huh? Imagine if Joseph got up and said, ah, that's a dream, kill with Jesus. Jesus, they would, have, they, would have, they would have butchered him into pieces. The only thing is he wouldn't have died because he's the word. Are you getting the point now? But he would have sabotaged his agenda because he was wearing a human body. He was in all ways tempted like us, meaning he could face our limitations. A dream! Joseph was going to divorce Mary. He found out that Mary was pregnant and Joseph said, you too, you know, I'm not part of this. I don't know what happened to you. I'm about to leave you quietly. The Bible says he was going to leave her quietly and it was in a dream. The angel said, uh -uh, do not be afraid to take this woman, right? It's this and that for that which is in her, that holy thing, it shall be called the son of the highest. And on the strength of that dream, Joseph came and said, no problem. He continued with her. Dreams. Dreams. The salvation of Egypt was in a dream. The king slept and he had a dream. Seven seasons of plenty, seven seasons of lack. He got up with that dream. Someone interpreted the dream, built a strategy around the dream and salvaged the destiny of a nation. Are we together? Dreams and visions are real. In fact, the salvation of we, the Gentiles, happened through a vision. Is that true? I hope you know before Acts chapter 10, no Gentile was saved. It was the Jews. Right? It was in Acts chapter 10 when Peter was caught up in a trance. And then something came down from heaven. Imagine if Peter saw the trance and said, God forbid. No Cornelius house, no salvation of the Gentiles. All of us will be going to hellfire. We are spiritual Jews, but physically we are Gentiles, I assure you. It was a salvation that happened in Cornelius' house that spread to us. Dreams, visions. There are certain decisions I've taken over my life, over this ministry by the grace of God, that were on the strength of dreams and visions. God continues to show me visions today, directions communications of the spirit so it is one way to know the revealed will of god 
Now, let me tell you something very quickly about dreams and visions. You don't have them at will. You have to learn this. Because through witchcraft and Scientology, you can be manipulated to start having and seeing things at will. That is rubbish and jargon. It is exclusively the ministry of the Holy Spirit communicating things to you according to the purposes of God, not according to your desire. So whether God reveals to me through a vision, a prophetic experience, a dream, it is I can ask him, right? And then pending on the gravity of the confirmation, he can use multiple spiritual channels. However, it is exclusively of the spirit. My calling to ministry the peace and the joy, the conviction and all of that but then visions, dreams prophetic experiences have added to support my conviction and today millions of people are benefiting from that the last dimension of the speakings of God over his revealed will is the prophetic now I said prophetic experiences before I mean just any supernatural experience but the prophetic let me say that and then we'll pray and tie it up. Have you been blessed? Listen carefully, please. The prophetic. Now, we just finished dealing on the subject of the body of Christ. And I told us, remember our teaching last week at Charity and Faith, that every provision about the will of God or every provision about the possibilities of God are embedded in the body. Is that true? Remember the teaching. It may not be at work in your life. It may not be a dimension open to you as a person, a unique member in the body. However, that possibility is where? In the body. Is that true? Now, there are people scattered all around that God has committed and he's still trusting with the gifts of prophecy and others being called into the prophetic and all kinds of prophetic and apostolic offices that are helping the body communicate what is supposed to be the will of God. So we see from the Bible, Agabus was one of the prophets who God used to speak to Paul. Is that true? Saul and, 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 and all of that and, and then to speak to him. And all through scripture, we see that God has used prophets to speak to people. The prophetic is real and it can give direction. The prophetic is real and can give direction. The prophetic is a system and a ministry that God designed to help men access the mind of God and access the will of God. There are times here by the grace of God that we have called people through the agency of the prophetic and communicated words for them. I have counseled people and communicated things to them um, by the grace of God they have run with these things and their lives have changed so the prophetic is very powerful in communicating the revealed will of God the unique will of God however however let me say this and then we'll tie it up for tonight there is or there are two big limitations to the prophetic in themselves number one is that the accuracy of reception and interpretation write it the accuracy of reception and interpretation is subject to the man of God's personal word content the accuracy listen of both reception of the vision or the word and its communication is largely subject to the man of God's degree or his word content now please look up. This is very important. I was teaching in Enugu and, 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 and I said this to them. I think it was during the minister's session. I told them that the danger with the prophetic is this. The manifestation of the gifts of the spirit, whether prophetic or any other manifestation, will never replace the place of getting the word of God seated in your heart. Are we together? Because I told you that one of the things we receive from the word of God is the character of God. Say the character of God and the operation of God. When you study the Bible, you know how God works. 
So, with that knowledge of how God works, you will be able to interpret prophetic happenings in the light of the way God works. But most of the largely apostolic and prophetic voices that we've had, especially in recent times, are men and women who either transited from idol worship. Are we together? They also had their prophetic dimensions. And then they now stepped into the prophetic. And so there is that corruption because of the absence of the word of God. That inability to process spiritual things from the lens of the word of God is responsible for the error in both reception and communication. Remember when Jesus spoke to the man and his eyes were open the bible says he laid hands on him and he said what do you see the man did not see correctly he said he saw men like trees so if you were to ask that man to prophesy he would say this tree stand up was that a tree it was what his eyes saw son of man what seest thou an almond tree you have seen correctly meaning a man can see wrongly That does not mean you are of the devil. But that it is your word content that accelerates your degree of reception, number one, and two, your interpretation. Do you know that if I do not understand the scripture, for instance, God can open my eyes right now and I can look at Shalhoma. Are we together? Let's assume, for instance, that there is witchcraft in her family. Now, I have not studied the Bible to understand the dimensions of the operations of demon spirit in the lives of people. Any vision I see like that, I will call it demon possession because that is what my understanding has given me. So, when I see a spiritual thing wrong with her life, instead of separating it from her, I now look and say, Shahoma, stand up. You are possessed. Based on what I'm seeing, you are possessed. And I pray for her and she starts manifesting and she will go back wondering what her prayer and fasting has done and she's now saying so wow, I cannot understand I love God I am born again I'm filled with the Holy Spirit what is this one that I'm possessed again the name is not possession my inability to understand the word of God is what made me name it possession but the recipient now has received this as possession are you seeing the number one error with the prophetic so most apostles and prophets don't study the Bible because they think they are open and inclined to perceptions in the realm of the spirit and they feel if, if I can see why should I read it let me tell you something every time you attempt to operate the prophetic without the word of God your chances of dappling into witchcraft and error is very high no matter who you are you don't have to be fake the word of God is what gives they are the guidelines for operating the prophetic so you operate the prophetic within the jurisdiction of the word of God are we together if I look at Pastor Alpha and his wife, for instance, and God reveals something to me about Pastor Alpha or his wife that is quite serious, and I know is capable of destroying their marriage. Now, watch this. I am seeing a vision. Something, for instance, about Pastor Alpha and his wife. Are we together? But I also know that God is not the author of confusion. He will not come and destroy a family. That understanding will help me in the communication. I may tell the wife, please see me after service. And I discuss it personally. Are you seeing that now? My inability to understand that I can open my mouth and just say something and say it to the man and think I'm communicating prophetically. And after service, they march straight to the court and get a divorce. Courtesy, the prophetic. Are you getting what I'm saying now? There are many women that have been made to leave their husbands. So said the prophet. Madam, this your husband is, is irrecoverable. The way he has already left the things of God into witchcraft. And the solution is to leave the man. Or to tell the man the solution is to leave the woman. Including men of God. Including different kinds of people. 
the prophetic that compromises the character of the word is not accurate any prophetic communication that compromises the character of the word of God is not accurate it should be re-edited and reconsidered both by the communicator and the recipient any dimension even if it's from Joshua Selman if it is not consistent with the character of the word of God why am I teaching you this look at me you are going to go for meetings in your lifetime you are going to meet great and mighty men prophets of God are we together and they are going to speak to you at one point or the other they are not fake they are not devils but you must have an, a discernment the moment you look at a prophet you should have discernment to process the spiritual level separate the gift from his spiritual growth that he's operating in the prophetic does not mean he's matured spiritually it's a gift are we together so chances are that he can speak to you and you know what part of the prophecy to receive and what part to throw into the dustbin otherwise you will be in trouble and then there are certain aspects of prophetic communications that are true but they are coming to you so that you will change it not just sit down helplessly and make it happen are we together yesterday i was when we were um, these guys did not even know i'm sure they'll be surprised to hear it now we're coming back and when we're going to the airport to come back you know someone called me and um she was telling me that she had a dream and she saw a plane crash you know this and that a plane crash and, and truly truly this is somebody that i know that the the word of the lord i know that she has a track record truly truly when she sees something or says something it happens and so she was afraid she said are you people going you know this and that and that and i said yes and uh i know what imagine that i did not have the bank of the word of god till today i'll be in any war. waiting for the day another word will come and say now the road is clear but now what the person saw may not be wrong but there is a more sure word of prophecy are we together now so that may be the plan of the devil for me to die yesterday in the air are we together but i knew that if i enter it will not crash now that's another level of conviction it's not about bragging my strength is not on a, the written word of god that is more exalted above his name and any prophecy because we see in part and we prophesy in part are we together now A man of God once prophesied to a woman, a very accurate man of God, young man and all of that. I, I don't know which of the cities he is in and all of that. He prophesied to a woman and um, he told her she was going to have a baby girl. And the woman was trusting God for a baby boy. She had sown seeds and this. she went to God and she said, Lord, I, I respect and honor that prophet, but it's a baby boy. I tell you, there is a solid bouncing baby boy came out. Look, let me tell you. The part of scripture you believe is the part that works for you. If someone tells me today you are going to die, it may be true. God opened his eyes to see demons plotting on how to die. <laughs> I'll, 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 go and, I'll go and die. But I'm not even going to pray about it. I'm going to go home quietly and sit down. Even if the devil drives my car, he will take me home. Are you getting what I'm saying? You must, you must have a settled... Now, don't brag for nothing. I know the burning bush I have seen that gives me the audacity to make that statement. I've seen death eyeball to eyeball. I know it. I know how it looks. It knows how I look. So it's not that I'm just talking for nothing. Honestly. Tomorrow we're off to Ibadan again. Who knows what the devil is planning this night? Maybe they are planning and say, okay, we lost our chance. Now is the next chance. They are free to plan. The Bible never stopped them from planning. The power of performance is where the sovereignty of God comes in. He says, surely they will gather. But because their gathering is not of the Lord, they will scatter. 
Otherwise, you will land into trouble. Someone will look at you and say, Oh, you do not have a fallopian tube. Based on what God is revealing to me, Kai, there's no fallopian tube, no child. And you go back saying, Talk. The way this thing is, I will just go and adopt a child. And the man who married you is regretting and angry and wondering why. But the Bible says, And God opened the womb of Leah. It's none of your business where the child will grow. Whether it's your head, wherever. Let the child grow and come out after nine months. It's none of your business where the child grows. History has recorded women who gave birth to twins with no womb. Twins, not even a child. Are we together? The will of God. Finally, there is a system that God built in the body to help us grow to a point of discernment where we can receive his revealed will. And that system is called praying in the spirit. Please write it down. There are not many systems to discernment. Praying in the spirit. I didn't know time had gone so much. Oh my God. Everybody say praying in the spirit. Say it again. Say praying in tongues. Now let me tell you something. Look up please. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. When you read verse 2, you read verse 4. It says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue. Listen please believers. It says, Edifieth himself. Edifieth himself. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue. Does what? Edifieth himself. The believer who does not pray in the spirit, I guarantee you, will have a hard time discerning the revealed will of God. You can check scripture and see it, but when it comes to your everyday decisions, as far as the advancement of your life is concerned, you will find out that you've not been able to build your spirit to rise beyond the level of the flesh. So the devil can manipulate your dreams. Are we together? Today, you will dream and see yourself in Abuja. Just when you, are, you want to find out the next day, you will see yourself in Ogun. The devil is playing with your mind. Because God is not an author of confusion. Are we together? Next tomorrow, you see yourself in London. After seeing yourself four times, you give up using dreams and you sit down and you don't move forward again. Satan can manipulate dreams. But brothers and sisters, there is a level to which your spirit will rise. That no power of darkness will near anything that is a channel for spiritual communication in your life. There is no devil who will come to me in my dreams and manipulate me. No, 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 no. Even in my sleep, there is a garrison of the word of God. Praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. When you cultivate the art of praying in the spirit, you are not only granting access for your petitions. You are not only challenging the powers that be. Listen, you are edifying yourself. And one of the ways to edify yourself is to build yourself to a point where you sustain the ability to discern. Many believers do not have discernment. Many believers do not have discernment. God will want to communicate certain realities to us, but our spirits are too dappled in the flesh. We cannot receive the promptings of the spirit. When his will is done, his kingdom comes. The will as written from scripture should be obeyed to the latter without any compromise. But that part of the will that has to be revealed is accessed largely through discernment. Discernment will also help you to dream correctly, not dream foolishly. You are trusting God for direction, a serious direction. You have a dream and you saw yourself drinking ice cream. How does that relate to what you are laboring and fasting for? Don't laugh. In the Bible, when men slept, God showed them dreams that were consistent with their desires. But right now, dreams have been devalued because we are communicating carnally. The devil is a liar in the name of Jesus. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. Three quick prayer points very quickly. 
three quick prayer points. Make sure you pray them with all your heart. Prayer point number one. Lord, grant me grace to be obedient to your will as revealed in scripture. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. There are dimensions of his will that has been revealed in scripture. You don't have to ask God. All you need is the grace. All you need is the grace to walk in it. Are you praying, Koinonia? Inside and outside, pray. Grant me grace. Grant me grace. Grant me grace. It is your will for me to prosper. It's already revealed in scripture. Grant me grace to live by the principles. It is your will for me to succeed in my exams. It's revealed in scripture. Grant me grace. Grant me grace. It is your will for me to rise and be world class. May I never doubt your written will for me. Let the consciousness of what you have written in the Bible give me confidence. It is your will for me to be healed. I receive grace to never accommodate sickness in my life. It is your will for me to give birth. Grant me grace to never accommodate barrenness in my life. please pray pray you are building yourself if you must fulfill destiny it will only be according to the will of god and the first dimension of his will is his written will access from scripture hallelujah 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 listen never ask god if it's his will over something that has been clearly stated in the bible don't ever ask god if it's his will to heal you don't ever ask god if it's his will for you to live long are we together don't ever ask god if it's his will for you to prosper don't ever ask god if it's his will for your business to expand it's his written will second prayer point you're going to pray and say, Lord, every direction I need that I have not directly found in scripture, I pray that you reveal it to me. Please pray. Every direction I need for the next level of my life, for the next level of marriage, relationship, for the next level of business, for the next level of ministry, reveal it to me. It is within your power. Lord, use the instrument of peace and joy. Use the instrument of peace and joy. Use the instrument of dreams, visions, prophetic encounters. Lord, even use the prophetic ministry. Speak to me. Let my confusion of decades melt away with one assured direction from you let my confusion of decades melt away let my confusion of decades melt away let my confusion of months let my confusion of years melt away where to go what job to do what business to take who to marry how many children to have lord i believe you your revealed will i'm at a sensitive period in my life i cannot make mistakes pray i need a clear direction i cannot afford to make mistakes over my academics i cannot afford to make mistakes over my marital destiny i cannot afford to make mistakes over the business that i should be engaged in i should not be at a loss because of lack of knowledge of your will over the geography the geography my location reveal your will to me oh god 
Reveal your will to me, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, many of you will return with testimonies from this teaching. Because so many of us right now, do you know, listen, let me tell you, do you know why many Christians don't move forward? Because they have been brought to the awareness that taking a step outside of the will of God will cost you. So most Christians are marking time because they want to make sure they are sure of their decisions. Which is why you must pray. Because it is the devil's plan to manipulate the revealed will of God so that when you don't hear it, you don't move forward. Are we together? I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, build my spirit man to a point where I receive your will without error and without manipulation. Lift your voice and pray. Build my spirit man. 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 Build my spirit man in the name of the Lord Jesus. Build my spirit man so that I can discern your will. I can discern your will. Build my spirit man. No manipulation of my dreams. Build my spirit man. No manipulation of my visions. Build my spirit man. No manipulation of the prophetic experiences that come to me. My God and my King. Give me sound experiences that will convince me of your will beyond the shadow of a doubt. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the confusion over where to be located, may the God of heaven settle that matter in our lives may the confusion over when to marry who to marry where to marry be settled once and for all in our lives in the name of Jesus may the confusion over what business to do and where to do it and with whom to do it be settled in the name of Jesus Christ Anyone here who is currently in a season of strange confusion. It looks like everything is confused in your life. You are a Christian. You love God. But you are confused about marriage. You are confused about career. You want to leave Zaria. You don't know whether you should leave or not. You don't know whether you should get into ministry or get a job. I pray tonight in the name that is above all names. I pray that through your dreams and the visions of the night, may the will of God be revealed to you. May the will of God be revealed to you. May the will of God be revealed to you. I pray for you. Anyone here who is in any business, any relationship, any association, any ministry, whatever it is, that you are currently involved in that is not the will of God and you are seeking answers to know I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus whether to work with a certain man of God or not whether to work with a certain ministry or not whether to have a ministry of yourself or be under someone may that revealed will be communicated to you expressly may that revealed will be communicated to you expressly there are a number of us who are asking God whether to just be entrepreneurs or take jobs or combine both. We don't know what we want. Some of us want to go to the military. Some of us want to go to the banking sector. Some of us want to even go and start studying fresh degrees again. It's important that you hear God. Don't just do things because you want to do it. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. The Bible says, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Tonight, we agree in this place that in the name of Jesus, everyone here who has a, an issue of confusion, between now and the end of next week, may my God clear those areas of confusion. May my God clear those gray areas of confusion. 
May my God clear those areas of confusion. Hallelujah. The book of Joshua chapter 6. There are a few lessons we can learn. The Bible already records that everything that is written in the Bible is for our learning. That through the comfort of scripture, we might find hope. Joshua chapter 6. It's a very interesting story. Um, the Lord opened my eyes to a very deep mystery here. And I want to share part of it with us. Verse 1. Okay, it's projected. Now Jericho was straightly shut up. Why? Because the children, because of the children of Israel. And it says, none went out and none came in. Imagine, ladies and gentlemen, a situation where a city is shut. Nothing is allowed to go out through it. Nothing is allowed to come out. It's a description of the lives of many people. The Bible says this city is shut in a way that nothing can go out. And it means it cannot receive anything. It cannot give and it cannot receive. Are we together now? And then the Bible says, verse 2, and the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thy hand Jericho and its king and the mighty men of Velo. This is God speaking. Verse 3. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shall thou do six days. Verse 4. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns and the seventh day he shall compass the city seven times and the priest shall blow the trumpets verse six and joshua the son of Nun called the priests notice now and he said unto them take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the lord now look up we're going to continue but the bible is describing something very interesting here do you know that the surprising thing about this scripture is that the purpose for fighting that land was not to occupy jericho the bible never said they fought and they said let's enter so what was it about jericho that they needed to destroy it to continue their journey i thought that they would fight God said, I've given you the land. How can you wait seven days, fight, defeat a city, and then keep moving? That meant Jericho was not just a city. Jericho represented something that was a deep mystery. The Bible says nothing could go into it, and nothing could come out. Meaning, if you found yourself in that city, there was no possibility of connection with any environment outside. Nothing could go out. Nothing could come in. Are we together? A city so fortified, the Bible says five chariots could hang on the fence of that city. And then Joshua, the son of Nun, notice the strategy. In order to defeat this city, he said, I know you have men of war, but now I need the priests, not men of war. Gather the priests and then introduce the ark of the covenant and then surround keep going around that challenge with the ark notice this don't talk don't do anything just carry the ark and keep surrounding that city that is so fortified there is no human way of crumbling that city but he introduced the ark listen carefully and he said to carry that ark and for six days all i want you to do is to gather the priests the ones who mediate between God and man carry the ark, a symbol of the strength and the presence of God. Because he was trying to show Joshua that what you see is not all there is. If you fight physically, there is a force that makes Jericho Jericho. And that even if you pass Jericho in peace, Jericho will not leave you in peace. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It was not the issue of occupying. Is that something needed to be broken in Jericho for their journey to be successful. 
a city you can't see the king you can't see the citizens but the city is fortified nothing can go out nothing can come in when the lord look let me tell you something about god the tools that he uses tells you what challenge he's fighting when he went to egypt he didn't say moses let me show you how to use the sphere and a gun and whatever he said no egypt is not just egypt because they have men of war there are spirits and so take this rod now he's telling he's telling joshua joshua this challenge you see don't mind the physical size of the challenge there are entities that are standing there to make sure that no form of breakthrough comes no deliverance comes a city that stands as an altar within a territory and he says gather the priests i thought you would confront the king he said leave the king alone carry my presence carry the ark start going around and compass that was the language just keep going around that city with my presence don't utter a word let my presence keep going around six days this is what you will do and the bible says that they continue that way verse 11 so the ark of the lord compassed the city going about it once and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp verse 15 and it came to pass on the seventh day listen carefully that he rose up early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven days only that on that day they compassed the city seven times and it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew the trumpet joshua said unto the people shout notice from day one to day seven no one was allowed to talk the only thing that was speaking was the ark it was a communication of spirits first there will be a participation but the physical only comes on the seventh day you start dealing with things physically no 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 let the ark speak what you cannot speak when the victory has been established by the ark your shout only manifested what sort of war do you fight with ark not swords carry the ark go round that challenge go round jericho what kind of mason what kind of engineer would deconstruct the blocks they were not held by cement and mortar they were held by covenants and ordinances he said only the ark can deal with this listen let me tell you this jericho is a representation of the kinds of situations of many people the the fortification is such that your shouting and trying to do all you know to do may not provide that solution are we together but the system here the first thing is look for the priest if you cannot find a priest then there cannot be victory you can find men of war but this one requires priesthood it is only priesthood that has the capacity to nullify the mystery that built jericho are we together the bible says here we have been made unto our god kings and priests there is an office of the priesthood of a believer and only that office is able to address certain intricate fortifications of darkness they would have shouted they would have tried fighting and they would have died i believe if they tried to fight jericho the men of jericho would not use swords the mystery that built jericho will fight them and yet on this occasion the lord tells joshua your sword is useful but now not for now your voice is useful but not for now go around jericho those walls you see were not just physical walls those walls the physical walls you see were a representation of something he said go around it tonight the lord has brought his presence and let me tell you what has been happening in this service is like taking the presence of god and going around situations you may not understand you were not designed to understand what the act speaks is a spirit communication there is a place where you shout with your intelligence 
but this warfare leave it for the ark and the covenant are we together there are languages over our lives and puzzles and mysteries that only the presence of god has a solution over the bible says so the people shouted verse 20 when the priests blew the trumpet and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet the bible says the people shouted with a great shout and the wall fell down flat meaning it was built in a way and manner that it was not just by hands alone the walls that five chariots could stay sank something about the going around with the ark was doing something to the controlling powers that held that situation in other words the building was never the issue you will be deceived to think because the building is large it is a function of the engineering and here god is revealing and said joshua don't waste your time just like a situation that has been for 15 years 30 years and you may think because it has stayed so long it's just that those who have been fighting it have been fighting it physically let me tell you when the act goes round, it doesn't take long you will see a situation that you thought was so long crumble you will see joblessness all of a sudden crumble the assignment tonight is to find a priest take the ark blow the trumpet and let there be a shout and you will watch jericho notice the bible says when jericho fell down flat the bible says the people entered and killed everything inside and they carried the treasures so that city was fortified and god challenged them to destroy that but the city was holding a treasure that was needed for the next level of their lives there was wealth and blessing and the city would not allow anybody enter in or go out are you hearing what i'm saying and god said don't act like you would not need what is in jericho stay and destroy pay the price crumble the city pack the treasures and you will need it on your journey couldn't they have followed another route and passed the people since the people did not want to open and close it's a sign of peace i can just leave them but you leave them you will need the treasure that is in jericho because you see satan never has anything that is own is his own everything he has he stole it are we together carry the ark it was a powerful revelation and i began to think about how many people try to fight battles physically how many people waste their time to try to manage things no the key is to tap into the mystery of priesthood a system that can talk to spirits a system that can challenge controlling powers the bible says for the weapons it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood we wrestle not against the annoying neighbor we wrestle not against the landlord we wrestle not against the joblessness situation in nigeria that every jericho has a force behind it you fight jericho physically you waste your time when you allow the ark fight before you come there the city has given you way you never enter a city until the ark defeats the city when you enter a city and try to fight the city will tear you into pieces because every city has gates spiritual fortifications there is the jericho of wealth and prosperity nothing comes in nothing goes out yet your treasure is there your life remains at a standstill because a fortification has been built so you don't challenge it spiritually so you go and start a business physical nothing works you leave the business and get a job physical nothing works after that you go and meet your uncle physical nothing works will you allow the ark to talk to the controlling powers are you getting what i'm saying now you want a job you carry your certificate and tell an uncle somewhere uncle sir i i want you to 
give me a job and he says bring your cv and you keep rejoicing for years that your cv is with someone and you keep it because until spirits are confronted there is no breakthrough believe what i tell you those who understand this keep triumphing cheaply by invoking the mystery of priesthood now the symbol of defeat for any people is the absence of a priesthood and the absence of an ark even if you have a sword if there is no priesthood and there is no ark there is no victory listen carefully the most important components to win the warfare of life is not the swords it's not the spheres it's not the business ideas it is the presence of a living priesthood and the presence of an ark hmm not everybody can carry the ark everybody can benefit from the presence of the ark but not everybody can carry the ark this is a mystery everybody is allowed to partake of the implications of the presence of the ark but not everybody can carry the ark if there is no priesthood then there is no ark then there is no victory even though there is an army even though there is a sword please hear me carefully some may trust in horses some may trust in chariots some may trust in certificates some may trust in human connections some may trust in business acumen some may trust in all kinds of things but i show you how we win in life it is the token of the priesthood the ark the trumpet it is not just physical things when the gates and the doors are fallen then your sword becomes useful are you seeing that you only submit the cv when the controlling power that stands from your village and has vowed that nobody who is through this bloodline will excel is a waste of time it is vain to wake up in the morning listen carefully and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrows those you see triumphing in life are men and women who have understood the mystery of the priesthood they always allow the priesthood and the ark to precede them they will fight but they know when to fight look at me i came tonight to deliver us from a life of hustling a life of doing physical things you would think i don't know what i'm saying many people will not listen you will get up please help those on that you will get up carry certificates around life is spiritual there is no jericho that does not have spirit until the ark goes before you and until the priest carries the ark there is no possibility of victory treasures in jericho but the door is closed your treasure you can't go in you can't come out are we together do you know there was a woman there who should be saved i'm not sure rahab you can see that rahab was part of god the army of god but listen the bible says that she was stuck there her too could not go out and come in for as long as she was in there she was called rahab the prostitute until she came out of that dungeon did she become one of the the, the genealogy the lineage of jesus for as long as some of our family members and there are situations that are left it's not only treasures that were carried there some persons were also rescued everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me we prophesy everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored listen let me tell you this the more i understand the systems of the kingdom 
the more I see honestly that there is no hope of deliverance for many people until they find out these mysteries those who win in life are not the smartest those who win in life are not the most educated some of them by mercy they stumbled into these mysteries and you watch gates open and you are there with your knowledge wondering how unfair life can be jericho 45 nobody entered from your village your father tried fighting physically they destroyed him your mother tried doing business they destroyed her your siblings went to school got masters got phd the door said i don't open i don't receive and i don't give the lord said joshua stop wasting your time it's not about nigeria it's not about recession find a priest quickly find a priest one who is an act bearer don't just try to do it on your own i know you can fight but this is priesthood listen carefully it is the foolishness that has destroyed many proud people in our generation the bible says by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt it's not human worship it is the mystery of priesthood the priest the ark the trumpet equal to the falling of jericho when jericho falls you can fight with whatever you have when jericho falls your pure water can make you a millionaire because jericho has fallen when jericho falls one destiny helper is enough you don't need party when jericho falls one job can bless you but until jericho falls anything done outside it is a waste of time i never fight physically physical battles are the last it is foolish to begin your journey to victory fighting physically look at jesus on his way to the cross he spent time in gethsemane because he knew it was not about wood and nails it was about spirits satan came to him in matthew chapter 3 matthew chapter 4 satan left him came back to him in peter he defeated him came back in judas he left him something was playing out and jesus knew that he needed to settle certain things when he went to that cross satan did not know that certain dimensions of priesthood the order the protocol of priesthood had been kept let me tell you fear any man that understands priesthood even if he's a herbalist are you getting what i'm saying the people in the world know this and they triumph from one level of victory there are business people in this nation that will never do anything until they make sure there is an ordinance of priesthood that goes ahead of them life is too fierce to be physical no sir are we together you try getting a baby physically it doesn't work you go to the hospital doctors do their best it doesn't work you try and try let me tell you when you try a thing once twice three times it doesn't work just stop stop wasting your time stop immediately the bible did not tell us that one person was killed when jericho fell the people the same spirit that fell the land rendered the people helpless even the weakest of the members of the army killed somebody it was never about the sword it was about victory when the ark wins you win the only possibility for your failure is that the priesthood is not there show me the priesthood that has risen to speak over the ordinances our forefathers as uneducated as they were they understood the mystery of priesthood till today many of them we laugh at them yet they keep getting results everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me
us the bible says everything written in scripture was for our learning that story was not just written there god intended that someone with the eyes of the spirit can see and teach a people that you don't win battles with swords swords only help you possess your possession swords only help you manifest victory they don't create victory what creates victory brothers and sisters is the priesthood and the ark what manifests victory is your sword it is true that the horse is prepared for battle but the horse does not fight until the priesthood goes the nation of israel will be going for war and they will carry swords and then they will carry priests with a trumpet look how silly it is to be going to fight they can wipe a whole nation yet there are some people with some irritating regalia and the painful part is they are never behind they are in front the priesthood they are afraid but they know what they carry they depend on the ark left for me you will kill me and the enemies are laughing and say you have come to fight us like this priesthood our generation is a very arrogant generation that's why we may never get results many young people just i'm not saying anything is wrong with intellectualism we have so we have demeaned ourselves from the reality of the realm of the spirit do you know you look at certain people and you are even annoyed because in all honesty you see the efforts i'm correcting you now you have been doing it wrongly you have been fighting a neighbor even if the neighbor leaves provided jericho is there it doesn't matter who comes back the battle is the same listen if jericho is still there leave zaria and travel to lagos leave zaria and go to us right from the 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 airport there trouble will meet you but crumble jericho and remain in your village and watch the booty of jericho look for you and come it is not by strength it is by strategy i show you a strategy tonight to command strange signs and wonders is the mystery of the priesthood do you know do you know why saul lost his throne are we bible students do you know why saul lost his throne who can tell me why he lost his throne saul did not lose his throne necessarily just because he offended god saul lost his throne because he, of, he offended a pattern an order of operation he waited there was a man occupying the priest prophet office who was supposed to be the one to offer incense and they waited for him and the king said look you are wasting our time the people are destroying me say ah is he not the same god we all serve the same god and he offered the sacrifice and when samuel came he said no you have done foolishly if you allowed me to come god would have established your throne forever but now that you have done this the throne is taken away from you just for the sin of violating priesthood a man lost his throne without knife no knife nobody fought him but he lost his throne david tried to do his best to still respect him he was sitting in a physical throne yet he had gotten up in the realm of the spirit show me the job in the realm of the spirit otherwise stop wasting your time with cvs around it will not work are you getting what i'm saying you just get up physically and go and harass your unbelieving loved ones I've come to you repent you must repent you are fighting physically and all of a sudden you receive casualties but when you invoke priesthood someone goes to bed in the night and sees a stranger coming and says it's time for your salvation and the person is already convicted here you come and you say look I want to talk to you about he helps you and say Jesus I've been waiting because Jericho has fallen are we together you meet your destiny helper jericho covers his eyes he is the one but he cannot see you and you pass but when jericho falls 
like the prodigal son as prodigal as that son was while the father saw him the father didn't even say so what have you been doing i hear you have been with pigs he held him he said leave the matter of the past now let me put a ring come be restored for by the arm of flesh koinonia will no man prevail you will never get a job just by physical pressing believe me you will never prosper just by doing all of these things there are many men of god some of you are here wonderful men of god they are trying to win the battle and rise in ministry physically please invite me here's my complimentary card i'm a sound man of god by god's grace i'm balanced i'm this and that and that you are and jericho is looking at you and say it doesn't happen that way jesus knew this imagine jesus going around and saying people come and listen to me for 30 years no one was interested in listening to him but when he engaged the mystery of the priesthood he came out of the waters a voice spoke hear ye him publicity or no publicity everywhere jesus went men followed him are we are we together the bible says they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness let me tell you many of you your victory is already established in the realm of the spirit but the system for translating it we are there wasting time doing a lot of things many of our loved ones some of you are here you thought that okay by the time you get a job it will be all right you got a job you found out that the salary was not enough you prayed for promotion as promotion came to you all of a sudden jericho says that's not how we win i'm still here standing but tonight in the name of jesus in the name of jesus christ let me tell you you will watch jericho just like babylon fall before you so, listen when you hear people testifying ah huh, try to understand what made the miracle work because most of what they were doing they had done it before master we have toiled all night jesus said no it's not nets that catches fish Abba, you've been with me you don't understand how this thing works master we have toiled all night he said but i know there is a relationship between you and that fish and jesus said cast your net the net will be casted but not before he speaks it is after he speaks the cv will be submitted but not before the priesthood it is after are we together you will try to have the child but when you continue the way you are doing you will keep miscarrying forever it's not an insult let me tell you this without the presence of god there is no human intelligence that has the fortification to destroy an altar whose foundation is spiritual let me repeat myself without the presence of god spiritual intelligence there is no human manipulation that sustains enough power to crumble an altar whose origin is from the realm of the spirit what is fighting many of us is not physical brothers and sisters i know you are born again i know you love jesus christ but the mystery of covenants are territorial jesus has come to your heart but he must come to your life just because you received him into your heart doesn't automatically mean you are free potentially you have come into a kingdom with infinite possibilities but ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 says having their understanding darkened this is paul teaching the church in ephesus he says alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them having the the tragedy is not that god lied but that their understanding is darkened and so by reason of the darkened understanding they have been alienated from the experience of that life it's not enough to say jesus died it's not enough to say i'm born again if that were it brothers and sisters many of our loved ones who have been born again for decades should not be where they were i watch people under the influence 
of manipulations that are not of an earthly, an earthly origin. And I watched the folly of men, how we do our best. I was once like that, but no more. I'm born again. I've repented. I've seen the foolishness of fighting things physically. It has to be from the realm of the spirit first. Not from the realm of the spirit, whether first or not. The order is first from the realm of the spirit. When you plant a seed, it doesn't start growing outside until the growth happens there. That is the part you cannot explain. When it starts coming out, you can now water it. But the growth there doesn't need your watering. Listen, there are powers that until the mystery of the priesthood and the ark fights, some of us will never experience progress in our lives. We wake up in the morning, we sleep late in the night, we are sincere, but nothing is working. Are we together? Yes. Every time a blessing comes, trouble must ferment itself around a family and drain everything. The moment you are rising spiritually, how many pastors and churches and wonderful people are like that? When you are rising, Satan doesn't fight you. You will think you are victorious. The programming, he knows how cheap the programming will bring you down. So he can as well allow you to rise. And you find out for a season, everything is working well because it's like a string. You will reach a limit, it pulls you back. Are we together? Oh, I want to marry you. No problem. You will even be happy. Three days later, everything scatters. I'm going to give you a job and you find out that Satan does not need to fight you. He already fought you with the presence of Jericho. And God said, guys, the goal is not to stay in Jericho, but you can't let Jericho stand and reach where you are going. Don't pity it. Bring it down. There is a, don't just look at the fence. There are captives in that place. There are treasures in that place. And he said, let me show you. It is not by physical fighting. You don't have any physical weapon that can bring down that fence. Brothers and sisters, Jericho sank flat. The Bible records it flat. This is what is going to happen to many of us tonight. That's why, that's why I, I told you tonight's miracle service is not just for individuals, it's for families. Enough of this fruitless trying, doing everything by strength. There is a system in the kingdom. Are we together? The priesthood. There are some of us here who are ministry. Some of us probably travel for a long time. We are men of God. We love God. But it looks like there is a peg. Brothers and sisters, let Jericho crumble and you will see how cheap life can be. There are people who have experienced the defeat of Jericho, but they cannot articulate the system that brought the defeat. Someone stood on their behalf through the ministry of intercession and caused Jericho to fall for them. They just found out that they entered cheaply and even a dagger brought victory. So they can trivialize the existence of Jericho. Jericho is real. If you don't see it in your life, a priesthood already brought it down for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But everyone who must pass. Remember, Israel is God's own people. What is the business between Israel and Jericho? They had conquered other nations. What do they need the treasures of Jericho? When you read your Bible with an open heart, you will see that there are gaps. You have to be spiritual to get an explanation. I fight, I defeat Jericho, and I continue my journey. But I carry Rahab. I carry treasures. There is Rahab there. Without Rahab, there is no Jesus. Without Rahab, the whole fight was to carry treasures and to carry Rahab. Hmm. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, Yahweh, we look 
to soon going to pray the lord rejects saul as a king and now looks at david but there was no priest to confirm what god wanted the priest that was available still wanted saul and david could not be king god almighty had left saul and wanted david samuel said no i still want saul and God remained helpless. Think about it. God kept begging Samuel, cooperate with me because David will never be king. That God intended it does not guarantee his manifestation. Between God's heart and your result is a priest carrying the ark. That's why you can have a dream. You see yourself collecting a, a job letter you saw it in 2014, no priest. 2015, no priest. That your dreams show you Eden. Your life shows you Adulam. There's a system of translation. Are we together? And all of a sudden, the Lord now spoke to Samuel. He didn't quarrel Samuel. He said, Samuel, how long will you keep weeping seeing that i have rejected saul as king rise up carry your horn go to the house of jesse go and anoint the next king of israel paraphrasing and david remained there i'm sure david will be in the wilderness and say when will my change come the change was in a negotiation between god god already intended in god's mind this is the next king and the king will sit with sheep and say, Oh Lord, when will my breakthrough come? And God will say, The day a priest comes. All of a sudden, the priest agrees and God's will continues moving. A priest refuses and God remains. Moses was wise. He said, Lord, I already know you too well. Don't ever let us go here if your presence... If that ark will not go before us, I'm not going, no. Moses said, because my going is as good as wasting my time. I, I, I know what is before us. And he said, my presence will go with you. And I will give you rest. Rest is a gift. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Rest is a gift. My presence will go with you. And I, through my presence, will give you rest. My presence will clear up the spirits. And whatever you do. When you read 2 Chronicles 20, the same thing happened. Three kings came together to defeat the people of God. And all of a sudden, the Bible says, the priests and the musicians were now in front. And they began to sing. You are good and your message endure forever. The ark started fighting them. Who is the fool that goes for war with gold in his pocket and silver? And the Bible says all of a sudden they turn. Can you imagine allies together? When the ark starts fighting for you, is fearful. Are we together? Fearful. You are standing close to danger. It never touches you. Before it touches you, something touches it. The priesthood. The people started killing themselves. And the Bible says everyone helped to kill another. That's not a man fighting. That's the ark fighting. And all of a sudden, when the last two were left, he killed one and the ark said, what are you waiting for? And he carried the knife, killed himself. And when the people came, they found gold, they found treasures. When the ark fights, it fights thoroughly. When you fight... If your hand paints you like Moses and start going down, 
you see that they can defeat you but you carry the ark and let it begin to fight they kept the ark and they kept dagon these people brought an entity a god enshrined with spirit called dagon the bible did not show us there were any physical contact by morning dagon fell face forward on the ground the superiority of the presence of god above any enchantment and any ordinance when you see the ordinances that have been enshrined by your cultism and all of these things prevail is because the ark has not been lifted tonight we have come in this place to initiate a system of priesthood over the difficult situations of people to say lord if i want you for a few minutes just suspend the issue of job or whatever whether it is job or the issue of delay it is still the same jericho causing it any part of jericho is still jericho are you hearing what i'm saying the jericho that causes failure is the same jericho that causes barrenness it is still jericho the bible didn't say jericho do you know look at the interesting thing jericho fell flat but the woman who stayed in the fence how god delivered her that she didn't fall flat with it is a mystery we don't understand but the bible tells us everything fell down flat to break every chain Break every chain. 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 It's to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Listen. Brothers and sisters, we're about to pray. But I plead with you in the name of the Lord to believe this mystery as simple as it looks. And you will watch the wonder in your life. Stop focusing on physical things. You will cheat yourself a thousand times. Nothing on earth has the ability to stand on its own. If anything on earth stands, there is a force keeping it. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Listen, the type of sword that kills the enemies is not as important when Jericho is down. Anything can bless you when the realm of the spirit is down. Listen. I have seen anointed men and women of God. People I know love God with all their heart. But they can never prevail in ministry. Because they have been fighting physically. They do everything. And sometimes you wonder and say, ah, look how great this brother is. Look how great this sister is. Is there no ear on earth to hear what you carry and honor you for it? Hallelujah. Listen. People make all kinds of gifts for me, as you can imagine. People make all kinds of gifts. And sometimes I see what people do, and I'm shocked. I say, life is so unfair. How can this brother, this sister be this gifted, and yet be begging? And you see someone come out from somewhere, and priesthood goes before him, and in one week his life has changed. They can even be sarcastic. Priesthood will make them take life for granted. There is a system of ease that God wants to bring to your life. Please hear me. There are families here listening. You have done all you know. Why don't you allow God? Allow the ark come into your home tonight. 
and let it go around Jericho. Allow the ark come into your life tonight. Let it go around Jericho and you will watch that which was dead come alive by itself. Hallelujah. I was told recently about a young man, very nice, wonderful young man who loves God. Everything you know in life, including good things, fight him. And recently, I think something happened. They stole a phone. And the person who stole the phone was within the vicinity of the guy. And he was sitting down. The man kept the phone there. And police came and took two of them together. I got a text. The person sent me a text. And when he narrated everything that was happening, I usually don't call people back. But I was touched. I called him. I said, where are you? He said, Apostle, look at my life. Nothing works. I said, how did you get to the police station? He said that um, they found somebody with phone and carried him. You think that's ordinary? Maybe that young man, breakthrough is coming for him. Another thief from somewhere steals, comes to drop a phone close to you. Does the police not have common sense to probe? And they carry you together because there is a spirit coordinating this. It looks like coincidence. Someone just falls from a chair, just a little chair like this, and all of a sudden, one side of him paralyzes. It's a lie. It's not that chair that paralyzed him. Be smart. People fell from trees plucking mangoes, and they were fine. They cleaned their hands and carried the mango and went away. You fall from a small chair and paralyzes your leg? No. A, a coincidence navigated. The chair was just the scapegoat. It's not about the chair. Tonight, we are going to pray before I begin to minister. You are going to say, Satan, so you have deceived me through this situation. I've been focusing on the situation, whereas it is never really about the situation. It is about Jericho attempting to stand and challenge me. I thought it was all about job. I thought it was all about marriage. I thought it was all about children. I thought it was all about my background. Now I'm learning that anything would have still caused the same problem. Provided Jericho is standing there. But Joshua, gather the priests. Gather the priests. Habalakato sebrakatadi adabalaba. Listen, look at me. I want you in the mind of your spirit. Look at that job issue. Look at that issue and say. I will no longer be deceived you are not the problem the problem is jericho it is never that the business cannot work it is never that helpers cannot come once jericho is still standing here nothing can go in nothing can come out lift your voice and begin Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Self tell me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Shout it one more time in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Tonight. Tonight. I challenge. I challenge the spirits. The spirit. The ordinances. The ordinances. The spiritual forces. The spiritual forces that are responsible. That are responsible for the physical tragedies in my life. Physical tragedies by the mystery of the blood. By the mystery of the blood. I declare. I declare that victory must be established in life. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Listen, the Bible tells us, listen, that we have a high priest and that that high priest is a man. The man, Jesus, he qualifies to be a priest, not the spirit, Jesus. The man occupying a priesthood that is higher than the Aaronic priesthood. The Bible says his priesthood is of a better covenant after the order of Melchizedek. A priesthood with no beginning, a priesthood with no end. That there is that eternal priesthood of Jesus. Listen carefully. We are talking about very deep foundational issues here. Jesus, the man, the priest that took his blood. The Bible tells us that he went to the heavenly tabernacle and poured his blood upon that altar once and for all. Once and for all. The advocacy of that priesthood is superior. Listen. Every enchantment and every divination on earth needs the sun to walk or the moon the bible says thou listen without the sun and the moon if god withdraws the sun and the moon every cause every altar dies immediately because every other priesthood on earth or cultic depends on the power of the sun or the moon Are we together? And so the Bible says the sun will no more give you sunlight. You will not need it. The moon, the sun and moon, they are important. But I'm introducing something. Jehovah, God himself, will be the light that sponsors your altar. The same way, listen, listen. That men can say we will do the sacrifice by 12 p.m. When there is a full moon and they stand and manipulate the the they use geometry and everything to tap the powers of the sun and the moon and god says these things are inferior i come with another priesthood my own self the son of righteousness i am the light are we together i want you to be tired of what is happening in your life and family I tell you the truth when we begin to pray and I begin to minister many of you will see cheap victories cheap victories. amen this is when you will know that this thing is not just about physical efforts do you know brothers and sisters listen let me teach you something for as long as you keep focusing on individual physical problems your frustration continues i can tell you all of them are sponsored by a central force hear me all of them the same electricity is causing this fan to run the same electricity is causing the mic to work if you want a shutdown off the source of the power you can destroy the mic the phone will still work 
that's what we have come to do tonight a total shutdown then you will find out it was never a financial issue you will find out it was never a health issue it was never a promotion issue it was an altar issue it was an ordinance issue pray one prayer before i start ministry lord visit the foundation of every challenge in my life and my family lift your voice and pray everyone that asked get received lord visit the foundation why is ministry not working why is my spiritual life dying why am i not growing in the anointing what is the mystery oh god lord why the circle of tragedies one tragedy after another one tragedy hallelujah 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 please just just be silent for a moment i want to start ministering now let's just the lord is giving me instructions just just be silent stand where you are um something is happening inside outside everywhere the lord is showing me something very strange now um let me just describe what i'm seeing i'm seeing something that looks like um this thing people wear what's the name this thing that looks like a um, ladies thing that men wear that that looks like a yes that that thing that's what i'm seeing on many people and the lord is telling me on everyone that i see that thing in there is a very strange deliverance because that i'm hearing hidden glory and i want to pray please you don't don't shout don't do anything just let me flow you start bringing those people out i'm going to pray now for those group of people i'm seeing it because i'm seeing that those people no matter what you do your glory is never seen you will struggle and try but nothing ever happens now in the name of jesus i stretch my hands just silence everywhere father i'm seeing this in the realm of the spirit and tonight is a miracle service from overflow one two three and the main auditorium and those online anyone here that is a victim of this that i see by the power of priesthood i come as an ark bearer an envoy tonight and lord i decree and declare let there be deliverance now right now right now right now bring them out i prophesy i decree and declare many of you will feel that physical fire upon your head i'm praying now physical fire coming upon your head let them go let them go i command liberty they must go i come with the rod of a higher priesthood i decree and declare they must go free Restore their glory now. Jacos kapatariata, ente keta kaskotariata ji. Brakato katabalia. Hidden glory. That's what I hear in the spirit. Hidden glory. Hidden glory. There is glory, but covered in Jericho, covered by the fence of Jericho. Pakapata kato sabra katalia. Everywhere, inside, outside. I'm praying now. Please just be sensitive. Let's let's do what God is directing us to do. Tonight there must be total victory. Total victory. Now I'm praying for families. The anointing of God will come on individuals, but it is for families. It will come on you. Once that anointing comes on you now, know that God is visiting your family. Lord, I pray now. I release the sword the sword of the lord in the name of jesus to every family if there is a family here whose glory has been buried nobody rises where are they i decree and declare now by the anointing of the holy ghost i 
don't know what altar manipulated the glory of any family here but in the name of Jesus the son of the living God in the name of Jesus I command now by the power of the Holy Ghost let there be emancipation emancipation for every family hidden glory hidden glory the Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us and then we beheld his glory the Lord is still touching people the Lord is still touching people that's why you came you have done the listening let me pray now hallelujah lift your hands something serious is going to happen here now now i want to pray a very serious prayer the lord is leading me to pray this prayer i just had in my spirit altars of poverty hold on just keep your hands lifted father i'm praying you spoke to my ears altars of poverty if there is any family here in an ordinance under that cause nothing works there is nothing you do physically to be able to bless the family and support the family that works in the name of jesus i declare right now by the fire of the holy ghost let there be deliverance now by the fire of the holy ghost by the fire of the holy ghost Altars of poverty everywhere overflow one overflow two overflow three online if there be anyone under the sound of my voice whose family is under this siege i decree and declare now your emancipation comes tonight For all of you in front here i speak to the spirits you know my voice in the name of jesus and at the count of three you let them go now one two three go go out of them now out of every one of their destinies out of their lives Shekatos kabariata i invoke a priesthood higher than any ordinance upon their lives release their families now release their destinies now You know the lord is opening my eyes and i'm seeing a vision now you know how it used to be in a slave market that you sell a physical person and collect money that's what i'm seeing in the spirit like people with only trousers sold and money this is exchange of destinies i believe that this is very prophetic let me be honest i know some of you may not believe it but the destiny you are living is not your own a king slaughtered his son so that he will remain alive there are men that exchange destinies they they a king carried his future and said child the death i'm supposed to die you die it there are people like that the destiny god allocated for you you know this is not your life your dreams and your vision show something else in the name of jesus play now lift your hands i declare the spirits that exchange and merchandise the destinies of men by the power of the holy ghost at the count of three if there be anyone under the sound of my voice whose destiny has been manipulated i command now at the count of three be set free one two three be free now 
Be free now. Be free now. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Hallelujah. Oh, Sephia, Sephia, Sephia. Like Sephia, I'm hearing a name, Sephia. Who is that, please? Let's, let's hurry up. There is a lot to do. I want us to settle down, really pray for the sick. Sephia, who is that? Her eyes, Hamala Manane Nana Matia. Her eyes, hey, her eyes. Your name is Sephia. How about you? Madam, the Lord will locate the person. I'm standing here and I'm seeing an angel of the Lord touching the person God wants me to speak to. Her eyes, I'll pray for all of you, but in the name of Jesus Christ, I deliver this lady now. This lady on red, I command that spirit that has tied down your life and your glory be gone for you it's over now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus i release you now by the power of the holy ghost by the anointing of the holy spirit be set free right now Sephia, the lord bring liberty liberty now i command those altars to leave you in the name of jesus christ the anointing of the holy ghost bad luck bad luck i take it out of your life the spirit of i'm seeing a lot of bad luck i take it out of your life now release their destinies now in the name of jesus christ hallelujah there is a lady a physical person appeared to you in the room this is a woman whose face you know like a relative physically where is that person please someone you were not dreaming appeared to you and there was a conversation from that day your life never became the same please don't be ashamed i want to pray for you please don't waste our time we have a lot to do the lord is ministering to me someone appeared i'm not saying you were in a dream this thing is somewhere you had a conversation with someone physical who is that person i want to pray for you please when you find that person let the person come quickly who is ola i'm hearing a name ola Ola, I don't know if that's the full name, but there's Ola, O L A. There's someone with that name, Ola. Please don't come out if it's not your name. Who is this? Huh? Your name is Ola. I want to pray for you. Look at me. Rejoice. Breakthrough has come to your family. This lady, I'm, I'm Kai. Look at the evil and the witchcraft I see over this lady's family. All these people are, please help me find out. Why are they here? All of them, their names are all are interesting. Come. That lady with cap, come. Your salvation has come. Come. This lady with, lift your hands. Over now. Over now. Over now. Calm down. Madam, come. I'm seeing what happened. Yes. yes. A woman appeared to me that it shall be never would be with physical. Physically. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Look at this. When was that? Last year, May. She appeared. Face to face and tell me, it shall never will be well with well. you. No matter how, whatever you take, that you are not feeling fine, the medicine will not work. And from that, hold on. From that day, something started moving in your body. Yes. It will move and come to your back and come to your chest area. Look at this. Are, are you seeing a swelling here? You are seeing this? A woman appears to her. I prophesy to someone here. Jakas koto parakatia. Empreke toso bataria talikata. Anyone in fraternity with the realm of darkness over your life. I curse those people now. 
I curse those people now. I curse those people now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Madam, I deliver you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Be set free now in the name of Jesus. The living and the dead don't have anything in common. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is speaking to me. There are some of you, all you see is dead people. All you see is no matter a bulk of your sleep is encounter with dead people. I'm prophesying, lift your hands. The anointing of the spirit is coming on such people now. In the name of Jesus, if there is anyone here in strange encounters with the dead, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, I command a separation now. The spirit of Hades, I speak to you. The spirit of Hades, Christ has triumphed over you. Oh, death, take away your sting. Take away your sting. Hallelujah. There are a number of you here. I presume you are all Ola, including this gentleman on wheelchair. That's your son. That's your brother. What happened to him? What happened to him? Accident. Since when? 2015. And he paralyzed you. You can't move now. Oh dear. We are going to pray for the sick. But I want to pray for Ola now. Just, just stand. Bring for me the person. I'm seeing like a sword coming on one of you now. Aside from this lady, there is, there is an anointing coming on one of you. Let me speak to that one person right now. I'm seeing a closed door. This is someone's destiny. It looks like I'm holding the air, but I'm seeing that I'm holding a padlock in the spirit. Whose destiny is that? Among these people standing. Open, 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 open now. I command that destiny. Open. Open now. Open now. Open now. Open now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You came alone? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't worry, I'll pray for the sick, sir. If, I'm, if I don't talk, are you Allah, sir? No, don't, don't come out until I ask you. This is witchcraft. You would have died since last year, June. Yes, sir. It's God that kept you. I will pray for you. I've seen your case already. If I don't pray for you, in three months, you will not be walking again. This is stroke. What is wrong with you? Yes, sir. All my body. This is what I'm saying. I'm seeing three months and you're on the bed not to rise again. We have to pray. This is witchcraft. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want to pray for you. Come, my dear. This lady. I'm seeing a very beautiful lady in the physical, in the realm of the spirit. I'm seeing an old woman. Hold my hands. What fellowship. The exchangers of destiny. I hold the hands of this lady. And I declare right now in the name of Jesus. Let there be a restoration. A very beautiful girl in the physical. But I'm seeing the face of an old woman. Be free now. In the name of Jesus. I command the power of the Holy Ghost upon your life. I command that your destiny be restored. Your destiny be restored. In the name of Jesus Christ. For all of you standing here. My, my brother. This gentleman come. What's your name? What do you do? What do you do? I'm a printer. Sir. You are a what? Printer, printer. Nothing is working in your life. I need to pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I break this embargo I see upon your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. This row. I'm seeing deliverance. Chicken feather. That's what I'm seeing. Chicken feather. This is an ordinance over a family. Just this row. I stretch my hands now. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Kabaroko to sobaria talikata. Jakas ke barika to siyanapata. Let there be emancipation right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be emancipation right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right. Mama, I know that it's not time to pray, but I want to pray for you. Please come, madam. You came alone. Let her come. You came alone. 
Yes, so one of my say, son friend brought me here. When you are talking, everything you say is just about as if you are. Where, where did you together. come from? I come from uh, Samaru. From but, Samaru. Um, Basawa. No problem, Mama. Yes, I, I want to pray for you because of something I've Thank seen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Say after me. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The suffering. The suffering. The sorrow. The sorrow. In my life. In my life. Must end. Must end. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I will eat. I will eat. The fruit of my labor. The fruit of my labor. Father, by her confession, Amen. let her be free now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that captivity is over. I pray for all of you now. In the name of Jesus. My dear, don't be embarrassed, eh? Be careful with men. Come. I'm seeing somebody really destroying your life. Don't be embarrassed, eh? You are here. We love you. We don't condemn people, but be careful. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. The deception and the wickedness of evildoers. I pray for you now. Every captivity in our last family, whether male or female, as I stretch my hands over you, I command that it leaves you now. It leaves your family now. I say it again, it leaves you now. It leaves your family now. In the name of Jesus. For the last time now, an anointing will come on you. It leaves you now. It leaves your family now. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please go back to your seat. Go back to your seat. Go back to your seat. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands, everybody. Gentlemen, when it's time to pray for the sick, we'll pray for you. Huh? Just be patient. Please help him so that he doesn't strain himself. All of you lift your hands. One scripture and there is fire to deliver the oppressed now. Why are you here, my dear? You are with him? Oh, is your daddy. What? Okay. Since then, there is something that has been working on his body. Like you had an slave. accident? Yes, sir. Okay, and what happened? And since then, something has been working on his body, on his stomach, like snake. At times, the thing will... Are you seeing what I'm saying? So it was never about accident, you see. Accident was just the condition that made this happen. I saw three months stroke hitting this man and him not standing up from the bed again. But the Lord would destroy it. Eh? Just be patient. We want to pray now. Let me show you one scripture and then we'll pray. Exodus chapter 15. Quickly please. 6 to 11. Exodus 15. We're going to do a quick walk. We need to cast out wicked devils out of lives and families. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, has dashed into pieces the enemy. Next verse, to 11. And in the greatness of thy excellency, thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Thou sentest forth thy wrath, which consumed them as stubble. And with the blast of thy nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood up right as an heap, and the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea. To 11. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My lust shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw up my sword, my hand shall destroy them. Next verse. Thou didst blow with thy wind, and the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty water. Who is like unto thee, O God, among the gods? Who is like unto thee? Glorious in holiness, comma, fearful in praises, doing, not delivering, doing wonders. That's what you are about to see now. Lift your hands. He said, I will pursue. I will overtake my lust. My desire will fall upon the people of God. I want to pray. Listen. Deliverance is not just about falling down and rolling up and down. It's, it's, it's bringing the anointing of the spirit to bring a parting, a separation. The Bible says the river separated Tether and Hither. Separation to allow you move. I want to pray. Are you ready now? Remember that after they moved the seventh time, it was a shout, the healer. A shout, not just any shout, a shout that was sent like a word. 
and the bible says the walls of jericho fell down flat that shout is what you are about to do but let me issue a command in the spirit in the name of jesus christ the one whom i serve and whose i am in the name of jesus i declare over every force in the spirit the covenants and the ordinances of darkness that have held the lives of god's people as they shout this shout wherever they are i command those spirits he said when they hear my voice they will run out of their hiding i command not only an exposition but a total separation are you ready to shout jesus at the count of three one two three in the name of jesus i command that fire to fall every power every enchantment every enchantment every enchantment every enchantment every enchantment every enchantment go now go now go now every enchantment every enchantment every enchantment be free now hold on hallelujah i usually don't do this until i'm directed hallelujah i usually see pillars of fire standing by my left and right i just want to pass through you don't have to touch me except it is not god that has called this meeting if there is a force and a spirit it must be exposed as i pass you in the name of jesus thank you father i decree and declare right now by the anointing of the holy ghost every power every force every power every force every power every force you must go now now by the anointing of the holy ghost in the name of jesus as i pass you that anointing like fire is coming upon you to set you free be free now free now free now free now in the name of jesus be free now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ those of you outside lift your hands lift your hands i'm going to pass here right now the anointing of the spirit is going to begin to come upon you are you ready now thank you jesus you don't have to touch me just just allow me pass be careful be careful father in jesus name let it be over now there is fire now that fire is moving all across now in the name of jesus ordinances be broken now i'm seeing fire just around here where my hands are in the name of jesus let there be freedom now let there be freedom now let there be freedom now be free now let it be over now 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 in the name of jesus christ be free now in the name of jesus as i'm passing close to you an anointing is causing every power let them go the spirit of the lord is telling me to stand here right now in jesus name let there be deliverance now let there be deliverance now from every force of darkness every force of every force of darkness be free now i came here because i know that there are so many of you look the crowd in this place i want to pray for you i'm standing here my god look at the oppression that i see just standing here i'm about to pray right now and from the front to the back from the left to the right i want all of you to shout jesus something is leaving people already are you ready now your destiny must be open please don't take it for granted bring them out now at the count of three overflow three one two three shake it be free now be free now in the name of jesus i command my god please help them jesus christ look what is happening here from the front to the back right now anyone here under the siege of darkness be free now 
be free now help them be free now lift your hands over flow three i'm praying for you are you ready to shout jesus again there are many of you you try to move forward but the force keeps holding you as you shout jesus now you're going to see something leave you are you ready father all those who have been held captive i declare that as they shout jesus let your fire of deliverance come upon them one two three i release you now i release you now i release you now go forward i release you now delay broken i release you now i release you now i release you now i release you now in the name of jesus hallelujah listen i'm going to pray for everybody but the lord is saying there are some of you here the call of god is upon your life but there are altars fighting you i'm about to release you oh god i'm seeing 17 one seven where are they oh god right now to the back where are they they have the call of god but an altar of darkness tying down their lives Mata soto pakariakata be free now hallelujah i'm going to pray for you look up please there are 11 of you the lord is saying it is you that you will use to help your family and the anointing that anointing of that joseph's anointing to distinguish you is coming on 11 people lord where are they to the back right to the back that anointing a destiny is rising no even if you are the last born i decree and declare let that anointing find you now let that anointing find you now the joseph anointing the joseph anointing that will cause you to save your brethren hallelujah please lift your hands overflow three it's not about falling down although there are several things happening here but i want you to just focus the last prayer i want to pray for you many of you will be surprised what happens to you listen i'm seeing keys like a key that was missing some of you were once you were destined for certain things and the devil veered off your life and as it is right now the treasure that god gave you you have lost it as i pray for you that restoration anointing is coming upon you some of you is anointings some of you is business connections lord where are they at the count of three let that fire come shout jesus at the count of three one two three receive that grace now restoration fire 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 shake up butter please open your mouth and begin to pray begin to pray begin to pray great grace great grace great grace great grace new season, new season. mama look at me it's over over forever over 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 it's going to use you in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ please everyone pray in the spirit. everyone pray in the spirit everyone pray in the spirit everyone pray in the spirit please pray in the spirit please pray in the spirit pray in the spirit pray in the spirit 
Overflow one, pray in the spirit. Shala barokatosi ana malakashi. Shapra katu celebrate tipi alama. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Overflow one, I want to minister to you now. Listen. Please, I want you to believe everything. I want to pray for you. Lift your hands, all of you. There are some of you here, as I'm looking, I'm just seeing chains. I want to pray at the count of three. I didn't come to waste your time. Right now, that chain is going to leave people now. Anyone here under the sound of my voice, and there is a chain of darkness overflow one. I declare at the count of three right now, let that chain be broken. One, two, three. I command that chain be broken now. Help them, please. Be broken now. To the back. Shakasko Pariata. Zato Zesekateriakata. Be broken, broken. Fire is coming. I'm seeing fire moving across the crowd. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break every force, every yoke of darkness. Hallelujah. Are you pregnant? Come. I'm seeing an evil spirit. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go. By the anointing of the spirit. I release the destiny of this baby. You will not lose this baby. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help her. This lady praying in tongues. In the name of Jesus Christ. The grace. For dreams and visions. The Lord is releasing it upon you pray for dreams and visions hallelujah now i'm going to walk across this crowd please i just want you to release your faith release your faith and receive something now as i walk through i'm seeing altars and they are living right now thank you jesus father let there be deliverance right now right now right now right now right now let that fire as i move oh god let the angel of your presence move let there be deliverance it is over that's what the lord says to you over now in the name of jesus christ over 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 shabbos katai sheketes kalabra katoziata kata over now in the name of jesus over by the anointing of the holy ghost it is over please believe as i'm passing you don't don't worry the anointing of god will locate you over now in the name of jesus christ let it be over now now over your life let it be over i'm seeing fire moving here like this who is that fire for in jesus name i stretch my hands let there be deliverance right now supernatural deliverance right now supernatural deliverance right now mama be free now in the name of jesus christ supernatural deliverance um i'm seeing a circle here and the Lord is saying, restoration of ministerial anointing. A circle. Lord, where are they? There are people here, at least four of you. I stretch my hands. Let the anointing locate you. The call for ministry. The call for ministry. The call. Parakato sedekatoshia. Enter. Enter that level. That's what I hear in the spirit. Enter. Enter that dimension. Enter that dimension. Enter that dimension. Enter that dimension in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Who is, is it victory or Victoria? I'm hearing a name like a victory or Victoria. Who is that? Please very quickly want to pray for the sick now. It's like you are wearing something like blue. Blue. Who is that person? What's your name, madam? Yes, sir. This is your first time here? No, sir. You've been coming. Madam, look at me. God is going to change your story. Completely. Amen. I don't know you, but yes. the Lord is saying he's bringing breakthrough. Amen. Amen. Hold my hands. Look at me. There is bad luck on your life, my dear. Good things come, but they never stay. And the Lord is saying to take it away right now. Be free. In the name of Jesus, I take away that spirit from your life. I set you free to move forward in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Can we go in? Who is Victoria? All the victories of Victoria be made free right now in Jesus' name. Can we go in from here? Everyone open your mouth and begin to pray. 
prophesy say in the name of jesus i'm breaking forth spiritually in the name of jesus christ it's a new level for me it's a new level for me enter a new dimension enter a new dimension now in the name of jesus lift your hands i'm passing here now there is an anointing move move to the next level i'm prophesying to everybody standing here within the vicinity of this anointing step into a new dimension i release that grace now i release that grace now i stretch my hands everything that has held you down let it leave you now in the name of jesus my god look at this are you seeing the legs are rotting completely in the name of jesus be free now i command be free now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ look at me my dear go home and write it good news comes for me in 12 days lord lose their destinies i'm standing here and I'm, there is an anointing let the destiny be open now open now in the name of jesus christ i'm standing here and i'm hearing i have called you accept my call accept my call accept my call accept my call my call is upon your life my call is upon your life stop fighting my call is upon your life that's what the spirit of god is saying my call is upon your life accept my call my call is upon your life my mandate is upon your life my mandate is upon your life that's what god is speaking my mandate is upon your life you cannot fight it it's an ordinance decided from heaven my mandate is upon your life light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle pastor lawrence speed come where is where is your wife to be come come two of you I see a grace for speed lift your hands enter that dimension now i release that grace speed to your life the lord is taking away delay go and mark it you are entering a strange level i see you climbing a ladder and the lord is saying it's time for your glory it's time for your glory light me lord light me lord light me lord collect that child quickly from kenny collect that child speed that grace collect that child in the name of jesus i'm seeing that grace a new dimension of speed coming upon your life a new level of speed coming upon your life a new level of speed hallelujah mm. Ejimi, i'm seeing something for you i'm simply stand up i'm seeing a bottle of oil and i'm seeing dollars a bottle of oil and dollars these two dimensions the spirit and supernatural resources that grace the lord is multiplying it i'm seeing a bottle a bottle of oil a bottle of oil the lord is giving you a voice not only in the area of finances but a strange demonstration of the spirit please be patient we are going to pray for the sick but tonight I, I perceive God is doing something strange young man come come you and this guy two of you come stand step into a new dimension new dimension in the name of Jesus you will never be the same this guy just lift your hands where you are come enter a new level in the spirit I release that grace now upon you in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I'm looking at people and I'm seeing something rising from your stomach to your throat. And the Lord is saying, is the spirit of prophecy. Lord, I'm declaring right now. It's happening to people right now. It will come upon you like a mantle. Prophecy. Prophecy.
prophecy from your belly from your belly prophecy i command those rivers makato sakata rivers of living water rivers 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 in the name of jesus christ this lady come you come quickly there is a grace the call of god is upon your life enter that dimension of his grace may the lord give you visitations 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 i bring you out of the cage that i see you in i bring you out of the cage i bring you out of the cage i see you inside a cage i bring you out of the cage in the name of jesus by fire i bring you out i bring you out ancestry will not fight you i bring you out of the cage in the name of jesus christ we are soon going to pray for the sick where's where's your wife where is she the lord is saying the powers will fight no more come the powers will fight no more 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 there are ordinances fighting this family i see it in the spirit the powers will fight no more in the name of jesus victory is established the powers will fight no more the powers will fight no more the powers will fight no more in the name of jesus and he's stepping to a new level of the prophetic that has always been there in the name of jesus christ Shalabarakatos. This usher lady, come in the name of Jesus Christ. You will begin to see things before they happen. That's what the Lord is saying. I should tell you, God is putting something in your eyes. You will see things. Shata Sotosha, Marikatos, Kobariakata. You will see things before they happen in the name of Jesus with precision, with precision, and with accuracy with precision with precision with precision and with accuracy when are these people that just married this lady welfare where is he now you and your wife where are they she's not around stand up let me pray for you on her behalf in the name of jesus christ i'm praying for your mother let the lord perfect her but i'm praying for you something wants to take finances off your life if i don't pray for you i see great suffering in the days coming it's like finance just dries up to the point that even your basic needs you cannot meet but i cancel it right now by the anointing of the holy spirit i cancel it right now in the name of jesus this fair lady an angel is pouring oil on your head that's what i'm seeing right now an angel is pouring oil on your head breakthrough step into a new dimension step into a new level in the name of jesus christ a new level a new level in the name of jesus christ wato where is she is she here i'm seeing a flag being raised up and the lord is saying it's a new season i'm seeing a flag being raised up in the spirit the lord is announcing you i'm declaring let that anointing come upon you a new season let that flag be raised in the name of jesus let that flag be raised you will never never be down let that flag be raised in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ we're going to pray for the sick let's just flow god you know sometimes this is this lady you come yes say for my shame say it for my shame i receive double the lord is taking me to a new level and i receive it i lay my hands upon you in the name of jesus the grace for a new level 
is released upon you right now i command it so i declare it so in jesus name i pray this gentleman you come confusion ends now in your life i lay my hands upon you i command confusion to end right now from your life in the name of jesus confusion ends now over your life forever in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ confusion ends over your life in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing i will, I will prophesy generally but i'm seeing a family having the breakthrough of a new car and an anointing I'm, 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 it may not look like it's necessary for you but i'm seeing an anointing locating that family now this is this is a, a blessing of a car you will stand and testify i don't care whether the resources are there or not i stretch my hands let that anointing make it happen in the name of jesus christ let that anointing by the spirit make it happen right now help that person please let that anointing make it happen right now in the name of jesus make it happen cameraman come i want to pray for you look at me it will surprise you the kind of favor you will start walking in amen you believe what i'm saying lift your hands father let this brother drink of the grace for favor a fresh dimension a fresh dimension a fresh dimension of favor in the name of jesus christ this lady you come the lord is saying i'm rolling away reproach from your life everything that looks like reproach i lay my hands upon you i'm literally feeling like there are holes on your head and the anointing is going through i command reproach go and never return from her life in the name of jesus christ now we're going to pray for the sick please we're going to be very fast we're going to be very fast listen to me if you have any cancer related issue or barrenness whether you are in overflow one two or three i will want to pray for you by myself otherwise overflow one um, i'm in the main auditorium i want you to come out over all the overflows just come to the front stand up stand up come to the front of your projector stands quickly please come to the front of your projector stands for god's sake not to embarrass you but look at this woman's leg look at this look at this doctor look at this is this sickness look at how the whole leg is rotting already please quickly you're sick in your body come quickly stand if the people cannot move just keep them where they are or bring them close so that you don't um are we together now we're going to pray it will be very fast because our time is gone we want to finish on time the devil is a wicked person for these kinds of oppression are we together there are so many people in overflow tree and uh god will grant grace pastor lawrence come you will join them today when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you made a way hallelujah father in the name of jesus by the corporate anointing we pray these people have come expecting to be healed expecting to be touched i pray that your anointing will visit them right now in the name of jesus overflow one overflow two overflow three let there be a release of the corporate grace right now in the name of jesus christ we're free now in the name of jesus christ and what's wrong with you my dear huh fracture where how long where is the leg it can't move and your hand don't worry it's okay and your legs lord jesus please Walk help this lady miracle, in the name of jesus 
Walk my miracle here I release today. that anointing upon you right Walk now. My miracle, I correct your Jesus. body now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please stretch your hands here and begin to pray in the spirit. If they are still praying for you outside, just, just continue. Please, if your request is yet to come here, you can quickly wave it, wave it, and let the ushers have it and bring it here quickly. Stretch your hands. Stretch your hands. By faith, believing that God will visit you. Don't, don't stretch your hands out of unbelief. If there are requests here to come, please let them come here quickly. Please bring them quickly. Shabakato soprakato baladabash. Unto you that answers prayers, O God, shall all flesh come. Rakato sodo brendege barakato shabradiski labaria. Endakato sata prakato jalabaria kato brendege degodos. Please pray. You are praying in the spirit. You are connecting. Lord, we are believing that we will not have to write this again. Be serious about it. Make sure you are connected by faith. Shakato kaparakato barikata sipriada balarabash. Shakata parakata paroto subriash. Lord, arise in majesty. Arise in your power. Visit the case of people. Change impossible situations. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shata prakato barakato barikatekate. Shalekate prandakata barakatosh. Eketo kaparukata bariataba. Lord, let this be the last time they will write this. In the name of Jesus Christ, let this be the last time they will write this. In the name of Jesus, let this be the last time. Shabakata pakata 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 pakata. Endeketo rakato shada bragada baladaba. Lord, we believe in you. Arise, O God of heaven. Arise, O God of heaven. Arise, O God of heaven. Visit your people. Arise, O God of heaven. Visit your people. Shabakata parada baroto soto predegate legata kato prandegate presha de bele de bosh. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Please respond with a resounding Amen in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, this is not a ritual. I stand on behalf of your people, Lord. These requests represent different dimensions of demonic jerichos standing between them and the place of destiny father as i step upon this let this be symbolic of the ark going around jericho yeah. hallelujah listen you're going to shout jesus we're going to shout jesus seven times are we together as a prophetic act over this i'm going to guide you and you will shout it for every one shout let it represent one day going around jericho that at the seventh time we are agreeing together that no matter what the issue is if you don't believe you will never never see the salvation of god but for believers you'll be surprised father that you hearken to this prophetic act i know god i stand leading your people as we shout that name the name of our high priest who has been exalted above the ironic priesthood above any kind of priesthood are you ready now i will call the number and you shout jesus are you ready number one number two Crumbling every mountain. Number three. Shabakoto Sopataya. Makrotoba. I tell you, I feel the fire of God as we're shouting this Jesus. Number four. Number five. Number six. I put an anointing on this seven shout let this be the shout that crumbles every mountain in the name of Jesus number seven yes.
I decree and declare unto you prepare for strange testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ some of you even before you get to your homes or where you came from you will meet it waiting for you like a messenger in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah please lift your hands let's take the prophecy and then we'll round up every shame and reproach that has lingered in your life shame and reproach some of you is a pattern across your family members in the name of Jesus Christ I command shame and reproach be rolled over your life forever be rolled over your life forever be rolled over your life forever hallelujah I release over your life supernatural grace for speed in life supernatural grace for speed in life supernatural grace for speed in life hallelujah I decree and declare that every garment he saw Joshua the high priest and he said to remove that garment every garment you are wearing that is attracting bad luck attracting all kinds of things the bible says to give them a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness i tear off that garment from your life i tear off that garment from your life garment of reproach i tear it off from your life i tear it off from your life in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare divine direction lord what do i do where do i go to tonight by dreams and visions and strange encounters i provoke divine direction to come to your direction in the name of jesus christ master we have toiled all night but i prophesy to you go back this time around to the same place you failed I anoint you go and succeed I anoint you go and succeed I anoint you go and surpass the ordinary in the name of Jesus Christ every door that has refused to open your parents tried it refused to open the Bible says lift up your heads oh ye gates and be ye lifted oh ye not doors ancient doors i come against every ancient door and every gate swing open now in the name of jesus swing open now in the name of jesus swing open now in the name of jesus every helper that must arise tonight not tomorrow tonight every helper ordained by God to rise up and come to your aid I provoke favor towards you from them I provoke favor towards you from them I provoke favor towards you from them listen whoever has what it takes to help you in the name of Jesus I direct their eyes to you I say it again whoever has what it takes to help you I direct their hearts to you the same mystery that bound Jonathan and David I declare wherever your helper is let it be as it were for Jonathan and David in the name of Jesus Christ all those in ministry here I prophesy to you a strange unction upon the work on your hands step into a new direction step into a new dimension in the name of jesus christ every family here that has cried that's all you've known to do cry and cry and say when will god deliver us i declare that your weeping has endured enough i prophesy your morning comes and with it joy in the name of jesus christ those writing exams let the mercy of god 
the mercy that helped those who went before you may that same mercy speak for you may that same mercy speak for you may that same mercy speak for you hallelujah there are people here you are sensing that your spiritual life is dry it's not like you don't love god but revelations they don't come as they used to come again sometimes you open your bible you cannot even read to pray you are sensing something is wrong it's like you know your spiritual life is under attack in the name of jesus christ i launch you to the new a new insight a new dimension of encounter a new dimension of encounter a new dimension of encounter the lord will open your eyes to not only listen to teachings but to get the spirit of the message there are some of us the devil has cheated us by allowing our prayer altar go down in the name of jesus tonight let fire from heaven fall upon your prayer life let the quickening of the spirit fall upon your prayer life every wrong friend in your life whether you want them to go or not in the name of jesus for the sake of god's hand upon your life i separate you with them forever this night i separate you with them forever time wasters destiny wasters i cause a separation between you and them forever we're rounding up some of us here are plagued with the spirit of laziness spiritual laziness mental laziness physical laziness the bible says a lazy hand a slothful hand will that a one that deals with a slothful hand will beg he will become poor i decree and declare the spirit of productive diligence not just diligence the spirit of productive diligence i release it upon you right now are you ready to receive favor i will continue to pray favor upon your life until it works i decree and declare in the name of jesus christ even if you have seen favor in your life by the grace of god i release you to a new order of favor a new order of favor a new order of favor favor is not when you have money favor is when men arise by god to meet your needs if you have money and men don't come to your life you are not favored you are only prosperous you are not favored favor is when men arise that before you call they come they don't come and go they come and stay until the purposes of god have been achieved i call them now from the east the west the north and the south help us of your destiny may they appear before you in the name of jesus christ I don't know what personal request you desire from God but I release my faith with you and I declare that by miracle service may you will only return rejoicing over that issue in the name of Jesus Christ anyone here trusting God for a good job not just a job that you look like a slave a job with honor in the name of Jesus I agree with you between now and next miracle service may god bless you with a job that will launch you to a new dimension everyone in business here the god factor the favor factor the help factor the ebenezer factor i release it upon your business i release it upon your field of endeavor in the name of jesus christ the Bible says, where thou hast been rejected so that no man will pass through you. It says, I will make you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. I decree and declare, may your gates be continually open. Now, I want to pray a prayer that may be very strange for some of us. I want to pray that somebody will give you money. Listen. 
hold on listen we are not money mongers this is not some carnal thing there are some of you this is what you need you don't need advice you don't need counseling you just need help straight help i pray for you you will be surprised it will look like a dream i pray for you not a helper not access thank god for it but a helper that will come with the financial resource to help you i stretch my hands and i release it upon you in the name of jesus christ the anointing for miracles help that guy the anointing for signs the anointing for wonders whether you are called in ministry or not in the name of jesus may you carry it in your spirit from today begin to reproduce a new order of signs and wonders and finally i pray for you whatever needs to be done for your family members to rejoice in the lord between now and the next 30 days whatever needs to be shaken whatever needs to be overturned in the name of jesus christ joy for your family members joy to your family members in the name of jesus christ let it be so in the name of jesus christ and for every for every worker here in the name of jesus christ after tonight rise with a new level of evidence become a testament not just a testament of a believer in christ but a testament that you belong to this spiritual family the grace to prove it let it be released upon you in the name of jesus whoever fights you may he find himself fighting himself whoever fights your family may they fight themselves they will point the knife at you and hurt themselves in the name of jesus christ dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline 